Hail Varsity Radio with Andrew Rogers and Damon Benning. Pavelski for Johnston. Johnston partially fanned, got it back, spun it, Grubauer, then scored! Joe Pavelski does it again! Saucer pass, Lundell back to Chuck, right circle, in front, a chance, Forsling, and he scores! And the Panthers take the lead! Ninth on Monday. First pitch to Alice Cole, swung on it, hit deep to left, down the line, toward the corner, way back, going, going, and gone! Goodbye! It's a game-winning walk-off home run for Alex Cole! To the lane for DiVincenzo, was off the mark, he dove to get it, saved it, over the head, bounce pass up top for Wiggins, zips it to the right side, Steph Curry for three! Everything's coming up, Warriors here in the third quarter, 105-78. I was disgusted with my performance, as if I didn't know how to play on both ends. Uh, Chris DeMarco showed me some film yesterday. He said, this is the guy I know, so show up that way tomorrow. And, you know, I I took that to the heart, and I knew, you know, that I would have to come out and have a good game in, for, in order for us to win. And he had a good game, and they did win. It's coffee and cream in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio, powered by Currency. Damon Benning, Andrew Rogers, DB, it's Friday. It is Friday. And I, at some point, if, if, if I ever want to be rich, I'm going to start to take my own advice. Because that would be an easy way to solve a lot of my problems. Well, can I get rich off of your advice? Yeah, if you listen. All right, I'm listening. 127-100. What did I tell Brian Edwards yesterday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Minus six. Yeah. <laughs> Stealing. Yeah. You guys both said that. And I and, said, and, and it's not really? only that. And I said 10 plus because it's the Lakers. It's not even so much about what Golden State had to do. It's simply you watch this team enough. They can't stand. And I said this. This isn't hindsight. They can't stand prosperity. They just weren't going to be dialed in. They stole their game one. They're content. They're Hollywood. That's what they do. They got their doors blown off. Like it wasn't even close. It was stealing. It was what 40 40 after or halfway through the second. And you felt like the Lakers were working too hard. And then all of a sudden, yeah. when the Lakers start to trail, yeah. you can see they're them sh- you like getting their shot, at each you, other. You like their shot selection. They like they're the <laughs> they're the it's why I, I, I love the name because I hate what it represents. They're the biggest front runners ever. I mean, when it's going good, they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. When it's bad, it's like one, two, three, Cancun. And it's, well, you would have thought this was an elimination game for the Lakers, right. the way that they were talking to each other out there. Listen, and it's, AD gets he, – he, I don't know if I know somebody moody, that gets madder he's a, faster. He's a moody son of a gun. Oh, my goodness. He is a moody He heads son to the of bench, a... and they're down 15, 20, and he's just – Steaming Willie Beeman. Oh. Steaming Willie Beeman. It's like, I, well, what were you doing today, AD? Like, how, how much did you contribute today? Hey, so I know I was late getting, look at this dude. Like, both of them. Man, listen, how about left and right? We're looking at LeBron and Anthony Davis right now on the, TV. The, I, it's not even cool anymore to say the cause. And, you know, I joked about him going single digits. I said, ah, oh, they have won games with him scoring five points before. He, he, he won up me a little bit. He went for 11 and seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good job. Good, good job. Yeah. yeah good, so he deserved to be yelling at his good, team good, to, good, to, to step it up. Good job, A Dizzle. Um, so yeah, the the uh, when I knew I was late for the the meeting because I forgot that we had it because at the last minute, um, the big the Big Ten to well, I, they needed a fill in quick for a three hour show, right? So at like 1245, I get a, a panic text. It's, hey, can you such and such, such and such? I'm scrambling. Rhett's voice is down. I was like, fudge. Okay, what's the lineup? Because, you know, if we're doing, just depending on how much research I had to do, right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we'll do softball, but we'll get like in the weeds. And I knew that I, I only had a, a little bit of time to, to, to turn, around, turn it around. And plus, my guys were getting ready to work out for Notre Dame. So I wanted to get up to the school. None of that happened. But your text momentarily in a very ragged, brutal, 
30 last days, I laughed out loud. <laughs> not hello, not are you going to get on the call, nothing. It was, when do you think I stopped watching the Cardinals? <laughs> I looked at the phone for the first, like I literally laughed out loud because I could hear you saying it. At what point do you think I wa I stopped watching the Cardinals? Because uh -huh. I'm not much of a greeter. Like if I just walked, it was like if I walked through this door and I just started <laughs> ranting about something. I was like, so then I wasn't even really paying attention, but I did see, you know, because the central sucks right now. Like nobody's winning. So, I mean, you could eventually be everybody's fine. losing. So I, I saw, you know, you, you get updates and, especially now that I set up my athletic, like, cause I'm kind of, I kind of use their scoreboard now just cause sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, ESPN has just been slow and I scores, get that. scores and odds is just okay. I like it cause I can see graphics and my eyesight is seriously failing. We have to talk about that later. Um, actually, we I think, I think, I, I think they have a, a fix for that. It's called glasses. Yeah. yeah I just Listen, I know Mike I know. and you have some, the old man is breaking down, but listen, so, I saw it was two nothing, and I was like, "Golly, they must have bit. They must have put it on him if he's if he's gonna stop watching." I so I grabbed my. I, I looked, and I'm like seven two. It was literally just two nothing. Like what? Touchdown! Like what happened? Uh, it was just one thing after another. It was. It happened in an inning. City. <laughs> yeah, an inning and a half. Uh -huh. I, was, I texted you, and it was eleven two. I couldn't believe it. Flaherty leaves after two and a I, third. I asked you in the in spring training, were you concerned? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. But he he was pitching well. Uh, he was for so, four innings. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but so didn't, remember when I said Max I is out. At. I said he he reminds me of. I gave you the AJ Burnett Kevin Brown reference. When he gets hit, he gets hit. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just like dink and dunk. Like it's like it goes from zero to one hundred quickly hey but if you ask john mose like we have six starters we're yeah. good okay. we, we have six guys jake woodford comes in not to say that anything like went you know super far downhill yeah he held it together but you're down nine runs at this point you think you're coming back and then to top it all off i tried to encourage you but to top it all off i turned the game back on because why, why why not live in my own misery mm -hmm. so it's about the fifth, I think it's the sixth inning at this point, and they're kind of starting to come back. And we see Nolan Gorman get pulled and Motter come in. It's a gunner! And here we go. Everybody's on social media talking about it, how Ali Marmol pulls Nolan Gorman for a guy. Like, this is one of the hottest hitters in the lineup right now. You just pull him out of, out of the game with no explanation. The broadcast isn't giving any explanation. Are you kidding me? And you have to wait until the end of the game to hear about his lower back tightness. Yeah. But is he. Is he really that hurt? Because he also alluded to the fact that he could play today or tomorrow. So you, you pull him in that game. You're starting, uh, you know, to drive back down four runs at this point. So uh, a lot of lot of decision making that that needs to be done on and off the field. You know, I told you what two weeks ago. A buddy texted me. You think Ali Marmel's on the hot seat? Do you remember when I asked you that? And I'm like. Hot seat. This yeah. Is, oh, we're yeah. halfway through May yeah. or halfway through April. Yeah. And we're talking about the hot seat. You know, Ali Marmel's on the hot seat right now. I got to figure out hot. the odds on the first manager to get fired. I want to know what the odds are on the Cardinals to win the World Series at this point. So here's the thing. So is messing around. By the way, I didn't watch my. I didn't. I did not watch Unforgettable last night. Did I you get some sleep? No. No. Oh. No. I was. I was really pulling for that ladder. I got up twice in the middle of the night. Don't even really know what I was doing. I felt like, do you ever feel like you can see through your eyelids? <laughs> Is that yes. weird? Yes, yes, I, I do. Yeah, it's like sometimes like when I was younger and I would whine to my mom about, because I, I need darkness, darkness, mm -hmm. everyone, darkness. My mom would say, just close your eyes. And I'm like, it ain't dark. Right? Like. I don't know. It just seems like whatever. It's it's a total DB weird warp thing. But I feel like I want to go turn my fish light tank off. Knowing good and well, I can't see it through the crack under my door. I was going to say, there's no way that's in your room. Eh, it's in my head. That's where all the good stuff mm -hmm. happens, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got up. and Then did you think you heard something? No. 
No, that's I, what normally happens to me. So it was it was significantly cooler than the rest of the house. So I I think I just walked around for a little bit. And I tried to go back to bed, and I got up again about four minutes later. And the dogs never moved, so I was like, "Oh, I'm cool." Then I just went to the bathroom and then tried to go back to bed. This this I mean, and it didn't work. No, do you so ever check get it on your phone? No. Okay, good. No, I don't. That, that would keep you up. No, I don't even. So I believe that I believe the whole blue light thing or whatever mm -hmm. those studies say. Like when you look at your, I learned this in Wizard Wednesdays. Like our our mental performance guru on our staff was basically saying why you need to get off your phone at a certain time because he thinks there's something. But I don't know. I'm sure there's data on it. He has data for everything. But so I I, I don't I don't do the I don't do the phone thing at night like at all. But well, that's smart. I am take it off the charger. There are some times that I, 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 because I used to play video games a ton late into the night when yeah. I worked in the news, just yeah. because I would get home at 10. My buddies at the time didn't work, so he would play games with me till like 1, 2 in the morning, and then I'd try to go to bed. I couldn't you fall work later in the day, right? Yeah, because I started my day at uh, 1, See, I, I, th I think AK's like that, especially now that his kids get old has gotten older and he doesn't have to get up he like, plays as early games. no i like i think he's he's on that a night owl yeah yep. because he he, he watches unforgettable at 2 a.m no <laughs> <laughs> i still can't get over how bad that show is but i'm glad my man travis is with me that it's a good show uh do you know how i remember it was travis this is weird it's how my mind works because you read in the comment section mm -hmm. travis is with me and i was and i i called him mm -hmm. trav i travis i said travis don't call me hunter so by me giving him that -um little name, I remembered that it was Travis, just because Travis Hunter has been in the news quite a bit. A lot of, lot, lot, oh, lot, what, lot, lot why of is that? A lot of deer on thoughts. A lot, mm. a lot of hot takes. But I'm on the athletics. So everybody. Tons. So I was, so I was reading, and it was like there are so many people willing to voice their opinion. Yeah, a lot, right lot, lot of hot takes for Dion. But I, I, but I think, and we asked this to to Brian Ham, Brian Howell. I almost said McDaniel. Brian Howell. I used to work with a Bam Howell, so I remember Brian Howell. He's actually at Brian Howell thirty three on Twitter. In case you wanted to remember, see that's why I watch Unforgettable. <laughs> you are. I know I have issues. Weird. So that <laughs> you remember that. So I say all this to say when I got up this morning, I I looked at the standings and my two World Series teams. Do you remember who they were? The Do Atlanta Braves. Yes, that, that that is correct. And the Seattle Mariners. That is correct. Do you know how many games in a row they have won between the two of them? <sighs> There's no way you can get this. If you do, you're a bad boy. One hundred. Nope, no, no, nope, they, nope, they haven't played that many, Shane. They haven't played that many. Between the two of them? What's the number of W's in a row? Braves won again last night. Yes, they did. Did the Mariners? Yes, the Mariners yes, did. Yes, they won 5-3. Um... Okay, they have won four games. Braves have won four on their own, four in a row. Mariners have won three in a row. Seven. Seven between the two. I come. mean, the, the Mariners are still, like, second from the cellar, but nobody's getting off to a great start in that division. Now, it's not as bad as the NL Central, but nobody's doing a darn thing uh, in the AL West. I mean, the Rangers are sitting there at 18, and the Mariners are at 15. So, like... You're riding the hunt. Yeah. No, we just have 100, you know, 30 games to go before we can carry the uh, carry the two. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I totally made that up. Jamie's probably so disappointed in me. That's he's my math teacher online. Make sure I'm I'm, I'm on point. But yeah, I mean, between the fakers and I was so you know what I was really surprised by the Toronto Maple Leafs inability to play with any sort of sense of urgency. They're going to mess around because you know that franchise's history. They're going to mess around and blow it. Mm -hmm. Because the they outshot like the the Panthers sk they skate and play ridiculously hard. hard. Hard hockey. They remind me of the Miami Heat. Like they just yes, they good, don't good they don't come. They don't cheat themselves when they take the ice. No, they care. They, they're trying to be first on the puck every single every time, and they don't have time. superstar players on that day. Like, they have Kachuk, and they have Barkov, you, you, but you outside them, of that. You watch them along the boards, and it's a street fight. You Like I said, you can come in skating with your head down if you want to. They play. They all play like fourth liners. Yeah, it's like... Every last one of them. Well, not really Barkov. Barkov's kind of a softie, if we're really being honest. No, he's, he's highly skilled. 
Mm-hmm. You you kind of hope you kind of wish sometimes that the skilled guys weren't not not tough guys, but a lot of times it seems like that. How annoying would it be to play against Kachuk? <laughs> I would hate that, dude. He's one of my favorite players. One of my favorites. And when they made that trade to Calgary and tossed uh, Cal- Calgary Huberto away, Calgary, Calgary. It's which, weird how some of the people up there. That's kind of how they. That's kind of how they say it. Which speaking of, I did this. And yes, Shane, I'm blaming Canada. Oh, I gotta save it for trivia. I oh, my, my, my mind is shot, man. I don't know how I'm going to be at trivia. Am uh, I playing against somebody? I'll let you play Sauter. Because Sauter will be in at, at, at nine. Is he coming here? Is he? Shane? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we'll find out. I mean, I sent him the link. So. I mean, this guy, with everybody getting offers, I mean, he's been busy. <laughs> Left and right. I mean, he's, he's been, been busy. busy. He's been busy. Well, yeah. he's been at Metro. So I re- field too. Yeah, I he's read the, baseball tonight. The sickest breakdown ever. And I and and I've been around some numbers people. Dave Bartu, uh, Adam McClintock is a very good statistician in college football. Um, the professor or Matrix, yeah, right? Both of them. So one's now analytics and okay. And Adam is the is the professor. Uh, Stu Manji, really good statistician. Mm-hmm. Do yourself a favor and go read Jacob Padilla's latest piece on Hale Varsity. You know, I saw that you just shared that. Dude, it is unbelievable. And if you want a subscription to Hale Varsity, use the promo code DB or AR to get yours. It's, and I'm, listen, th- no, this isn't like some fluff thing just to get you to go to Hale Varsity. How far into the weeds does he go? Man, he's got shooting statistics and data from pull ups, handoff dribbles, pick and roll, off the cut, stationary spot ups he's got clips to go with each he's like hey you want to know how bryce gets buckets over in charlotte with the 49ers and what nebraska is getting in basketball read this deal it it's like like who does i know who because i do any b preps with him every week but that's what he enjoys bro right you watch unforgettable he watches bryce's tape it's it's unbelievable like i just i i sat there Mm -hmm. and I even turned the shower water on because I knew I was like, yeah, I ain't trying to waste a whole bunch of water. So let me go ahead and just, and I, I made the mistake of getting in there. And 12 minutes later, I felt like the analytics guy were, and I was coming off a stretch where Caleb asked me last night, he goes, hey, you're good at math, right? And you're like, yes, let's go. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. What's up? Dude, he's like trying to find angles divided by pi with radiances and something i i thought i'm like i knew a radiance once i don't remember how <laughs> you're, to... you're like are these hieroglyphics <laughs> bro because that's how i would have reacted i was he's like, like i hey. used the pythagorean theorem <laughs> theorem <laughs> one time and i felt so bad because he's like oh that's okay i'll just i'll go get help tomorrow during the open mod like i felt like a failure dude i'm like that's some big time math you also haven't done that math in 25 years. Hey, I didn't have the heart to tell him I couldn't read it because I didn't have any lights on, really, any rights in pencil. And I was like, I don't know. Like, oh, and does man. he scribble? No, he's, he's Good fine. handwriting? He's fine. I don't know. He never has homework, so I was kind of shocked. Well, he couldn't figure out that math problem. Dude, normally, he had like five he had like, school. He had five or six left. Then he, he they had to, del- for some reason, he had to deliver donuts. So he got cracked for that, too. Donuts. Yeah, I had to bring donuts. They got team meetings this morning. Early. Hmm. Yeah. So he he was the one that had to and he's, go spend some money. And he's so cheap, right? So it's like he's ridiculously cheap. He's like, Do you think a 20 will do it? I don't know, bro. Let me... <laughs> How many people are eating? Six? <laughs> so he came back with a with a couple of dozen and it I can't remember what it was. And He's like, yeah, I had to use my debit card. Couldn't use cash. So he's, I'm like, you're like, I wish I had a debit card right now. I'm not the one saying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, not, <laughs> sorry, not messing with you at all. So anyway, like just remembering numbers, man. I I'm encouraged about the World Series because if I get that one right. Like you, I mean, you should do something extra special, like set up a parade. <laughs> sure, I, sure I, thing. I love a parade. <laughs> if it's Mariners and Braves, no, I know the Braves we'll parade were, around the parking lot. I know the Braves were a lot of people's pick for to win the World Series, so I'm not. 
that's fine. I'll be mm-hmm. with everybody else. But if it's the Mariner somehow. Yeah, I'll have Shane paint the Town Mariner Red. logo on his chest, and I'll put the Braves oh, logo I mean, on my there's... chest. Oh, man. So, so, whose clips are we using this morning that you're in love with? Say it again. My bad. You heard him. I didn't, actually. No, I was talking well, that was, that was White. Him. That's Coach White. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good one to start with. Oh, man. With. I mean, there's oh, man. iron sharpens iron. I hope they're on the. I hope they're on the recruiting trail because everybody else is. You see all the schools in town. Uh huh. Yeah, you see, you see that in state. Is, is that, that what you're referring to? Because I've seen a lot of who. Nebraska. Oh, like, are you are you referring to them? On yeah, the recruiting in state. Sale in yeah, state? yes, okay. yes. I thought you. Yeah, I said who? Yeah, mm-hmm. in state. Yeah, a lot of schools. Are we going to have any returners this week? Like same same coaches, same schools, or no? Um. I can't speak for other schools. I do know that Notre Dame came back twice in two days. Now, they're, in their defense, Al Golden isn't their regional guy. He just mm-hmm. was in town stopping by, but they sent their guy yesterday. But that's Keep the, the only school. Fresh. And I can't – I mean, Coach Samanji sent me the list this morning. but um, Is that uh, – do you have another trip up to Westside today? At 10, yeah. But so I'm sure, but now you have like multiple stops. You got to hit North. You got to hit Elkhorn North. You got to hit Gretna. You got to hit W West. Um, you got to hit everybody now. Mm-hmm. So I had somebody ask me about a, a, a middle linebacker at Benson the other day. So I, I know people are now officially like doing their homework. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's, very true. I, I, um, it's, just, it's just highly, highly competitive. And for a first-year staff and a first-year coach, it's going to be daunting. Uh, I don't like saying it because mm-hmm. Coach Rule, and he knows it too. Coach Rule and he he does. That, that's a good point. He does. He said, and you know, so and he's kind of he's so grimy. He's turned it into, yeah, we got to give him a reason to come here. Yeah, we watch this this first year, and I'm like, man, go to war. Like that's how he is. I mean, turn a, turn a potential doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. You know, Maroon 5, it's not always rainbows and butterflies to, yeah, we'll show them. No doubt to me about that. And I think Mitch Sherman hit the, was it Mitch that hit the nail on the head when he said he rarely speaks to recruits through the media, but you got the sense the other day that he was talking to right. r- recruits when right. he was talking about mm-hmm. have faith in me mm-hmm. and believe in me before it gets going. So I, th- I thought that was interesting. What about AD over in Oregon? Like, do you think – uh Nebraska's so, yeah, chance for that is higher than Avante. most are giving him. We hadn't talked about him all week. Huh? Mm-hmm. What made you bring him up? I was looking at an article yesterday. I think Athlon Sports tweeted something out of like top five players in the portal Nebraska could go after and grab, and he was on there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, AD. Like He kind of like slips through the cracks mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Almost, I, I, I would think it's because we feel comfortable with the team right now. So we're not Espe- like itching especially, to get, especially in the secondary, right? Itching to get another addition back there. Yeah, they'll be in the hunt. But you're talking about one of the most, one of the more talented corners to come out they'll, of this region. This they'll be in the hunt. Town, this city, like Minnesota, Wisconsin. How about Minnesota coming back around, offering again after he spurned them the first time? Mm-hmm. But yeah, lot, lot, lot going on. We'll set up the show when we come back. We have uh, a lot of guests to get to, some new faces. The the Kentucky Derby is this weekend, so we will talk. Big A. Uh, So stick around. Coffee and cream. Rodgers and Benning will be back in five minutes.
Rogers and Benning will be back in four minutes. and Benning will be back in three minutes. and Benning will be back in two minutes. in one minute. and betting will be back in 30 seconds. Coffee and Cream with Rodgers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Jumper no good into the hands of Wiggins, who pushes from right to left, finds Thompson in transition, shot fake into an open three, and it's good! Clay Thompson now has 25 points, game's high score. He is an unconscionable 7 of 9 from 3, and Golden State is running away with it here in the third. Well, DB, you said it just before the clip. How predictable are the Lakers? And Very. No, because you watch them every single time that you can. At least maybe. Every, do you watch every game? Um, Every. That doesn't give me any wiggle room. Mm-hmm. But quite a bit. But since I they mean, play I, so late, it and probably I, helps. And I actually like the NBA. 
as you very well know. Mm-hmm. So I don't do I don't watch anything else except bad series. <laughs> And that's usually at all. Are we peak. talking about bad playoff series or bad we Netflix shows? At, 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 all, at all peak hours. So. <laughs> that's I'm, funny. It is. I watch a lot. Of, I watched Nebraska of Northwestern softball the other day. So it's just like whatever. Nebraska's um, well, and Northwestern both North very Western good is programs. Way, way good. They're 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 way good. So um, that was a, that was potentially going to be a big series and. Nebraska, I wouldn't say late in a because it was at Evanston, but I didn't realize their softball field again. This is just dumb, but I'm pulling my best forget unforgettable memory, memorizing how the, the field mm-hmm. looked. It's right next to like a grass practice field. Then I could see a couple of goal posts just to the north of the softball field. And I'm like, they have a beautiful facility. It overlooks the water. Like how, where is that in proximity? Because it doesn't look like a nice place to practice. Okay. But it was right by the softball field. So I was like, ah, maybe that's like their outdoor deal. Because remember this week, Nebraska made the announcement that they're tearing up the turf and they're laying grass on the right. practice fields. And, and I, it, Coach Rule said something about that a couple months ago. So we kind of knew it was coming, but I forgot about it because I don't pay attention to what's grass mm-hmm. and what isn't. How much of an impact does that actually have? Like According, how- according to him? Yeah. Like 17.9% injury i'm within i'm close to what he told me it was a month ago so like injury re- saver is what you're saying yes you know he's a big study show i'm like oh my gosh this dude is so in the weeds it's sickening and encouraging at the same time yes sir <laughs> not coach mcguire coach <laughs> rule so like his philosophy on the grass versus turf is wear and tear over time so that's one of those things. I think I can say this. That's one of those things we were talking about not being a victim of the past and, but understanding it and wanting to do things a little bit different to move the program forward. That's one of those things where I think he goes to the athletic department or some of the big wigs to get things done. And you want a yes and like right away a day or right. two and it may take like a week a week or week two. And, a half. <laughs> and you're like I, and how'd I'm you forget sure, about and this? he's thinking like what is taking so long right mm-hmm. but they found a way to get it done and uh they're, they're ripping that bad well, boy up and, and land it this and week. the cool thing about that is like he had to learn how this athletic depart- department worked. operates worked and at the same time, the athletic department had to learn how Coach Rule likes to and operate. And you knew there's going to be some changes. Yeah, there's going to be growing pains. But you're like, but you're like budgeting for things not yet seen. Mm-hmm. So athletic department budgets don't usually work like that. Like you have a budget. That's why they're and called you have to stick budgets. To it. But I'm sure you. Ha- but I'm sure you give yourself. Especially as smart as like the Ewald and some of these guys are, but you know when you bring a Padden on staff and a Dr. Elsa and and that non-support staff that has big ideas on what's worked before in the past, some things are going to come up that you did not think of that weren't in the budget. And those, how, how about the sprinkler bill now? <laughs> you think that's gonna I th- that's gonna be a, attributed to the budget? So I'm a short, natural grass guy. I I th- I think it's pretty. Um, I know that's weird. That sounds not very no. football-y. But I would actually say that that sounds manly because th- people care about their lawns. I think aesthetically, but I don't know enough. I mean, I hear data, and then there were all these refuted reports, and then there's new data. I don't know if it's significant with injuries, but I trust whomever's doing the studies. I guess, but right. I'm I prefer really really short natural grass, and he'll he'll take it all the way down to guys just landing on different mm-hmm. surfaces. Well, yeah, it, it's softer on the body because you have more give. But it seems like some of these new turfs, like synthetic or artificial, mm-hmm. are really, really good. And they are because you wouldn't be playing on stuff like that if they weren't. Right. So I, I don't know. Like, I'll be, I'll be excited. I forgot a uh, I, f- I forgot a piece of memorabilia. I left it in the booth. 
during the spring game? Yeah. So I have to go grab it at some piece point. of memorabilia. Can uh, I guess? S- somebody wanted something signed by Coach Solich. Oh, okay. So I was going to guess a, a Coach Solich item, but I thought it was going to be for you. No. I don't have it. I don't. I got a couple things. I got Mark Richt. I got Julius Peppers. I got Vince Carter. You have your people that you looked up to. Yeah, the Julius Peppers and Vince Carter one is weirding me out a little. Um, because they're younger than mm-hmm. me. But, but you the, can still the have whole Charlotte an, thing an being able to get to Chapel yeah. Hill was kind of where that was. Mm. Sooner, I, sooner or later, I'm gonna have a Tristan Albano something. Something, yeah. something. I I uh I better probably I'm gonna link you two on group text. But anyway, with that recruiting. Oh, don't do that. Uh, you're, I know. you're gonna tickle tickle me on my insides. Dude, he's great. Uh, he's like an adult. I'm serious. He's I'll like, hang out with him. No, he's he's cool like that. And he's really he's good in school, and they have open mods, so it's like, yeah, what do you want to do? And he's go he's got to go back to track practice though. I, mean, I told you, I like, hit him and Caleb up at the same time. Yeah, so like just seeing these guys and um, like at Metro Track and stuff, you can tell who's who's been in the. You know who's got a nice frame? Davon Hall has got a nice frame. Like he he looks. Looks looks ready, built look, like look, a D one wide receiver. Look, looks legit. So I, I don't. I gotta call coach. I don't. So a lot of people now like him defensively. Is that a? Have you heard? Is that a thing? Uh-uh, I haven't seen that. I need to text him. I gotta. I gotta ask him if people are asking about that because I heard that like four times this week with coaches in just asking about other players. I'm like, don't ask me. Coach Huffman's the guy you guys all love. You know. So. Why though? Like, why more than at receiver? Because uh, for the longest I, I, time, I, I try not to. So here's the thing with me. Um, I try not to. Again, I rather be right than well liked. So I know my name's on mm-hmm. the line, right? So I try to stay in my lane because I don't want to say anything right. disparaging or overly encouraging that kills credibility. Right. So, you know, I can only go by I can only go by what I know. And I and I and I I, and I said so I said things like that's interesting like because I don't I don't know enough. Right. I I don't know enough. But I I I do know. You know, because Evans, uh, they got a sophomore that's got a couple offers uh, as of late. I do know, like, if those guys do decide to play defense in, in that secondary, like, that would change the way that they can play, right? Plus, you got a new DC there, um, so you want all the good athletes playing as much as possible. And I've seen it multiple ways. I've been at schools that platoon or try to platoon. I've been at schools that don't. Um, shout out to to Jackson Williams as Iowa stopped by there the other day, went to his baseball practice. Um, he's another guy flying under the radar. We're going to make one more pit stop today. Um, I know ne- ne- Nebraska is, is, is kicking the tires on young Mr. Williams. And it's hard when you start, you're a starting center fielder for the number, arguably the number one or two team mm-hmm. in the state. No disrespect to Lincoln East cause they just win tournaments. Um, so I, I just, the local recruiting is going to be interesting because now these guys, they're in town, and it's not just the it's not just the usual suspects. Like they are hitting schools, so you have to be very, very thorough mm-hmm. if you're the state school. It, is it just me, or do you ever catch yourself, or does anybody listener wise out there ever catch themselves thinking, "Oh yeah, I forgot that these kids still have another year of high school left." Yeah, when we get, talk about these that, guys, I, I get that a lot because it's oh, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. And I'm like, okay, like we're talking about college, you know coaches visiting oh they're gonna they're gonna commit here soon was, and then oh they're gonna be playing for him next year and it's like wait a second i gotta take a step back they still have another year i was high talking about left. tyson terry and, and cj the other day the guy at the grocery store couldn't believe that they had two more years yeah that's crazy i'm like yeah they're just gonna be juniors yeah, just wait till we start talking about seventh graders and how they have five more years until they go to college well, we're already recruiting eighth graders <laughs> so here we go hey marty cordero up next we'll talk one of the good guys Jasers baseball next Rogers and Benning will be back in four minutes.
Rogers and Benning. We'll be back in three minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in two minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in one minute. Rogers and Betting will be back in 30 seconds. With Rogers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Did I drink flow from the force? But beware of the dark side. Anger, fear, aggression. The dark side of the force I made. It's a drop. Hmm. Uh, I, I thought we got all of those out yesterday. No, this, he perhaps did. Well, he is the president. <laughs> by name. <laughs> and he may be the president of this man. Although, who's the president? Well, and I'll tell you what, it is Star Wars night tonight yes, out at is. the ballpark. I, I told you about the menu on Monday, right? Did you see the hot dog? No. I, I wouldn't probably hit the corn fritters first, but the hot dog with the, uh, it's got, I think, jalapenos I saw. And they have some, some Shane, is it, ta is it Tatooine? No, I'm kidding. It's Tatooine. They have some drinks too, but I'll let the, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. It's a drop. Can you give me a little uh, for this introduction? Can you give me a little Back to the Future, Marty? For me, I know you're a big. I'm not a Back to the Future. I can't do it. Oh. I don't. I've never seen it. I feel like it's like Marty. <laughs> I haven't seen Back. To there the is Future. a uh, Star Wars scene in Back to the Future, so that's very fitting. I'm glad. Oh. I'm glad you did that. Hey, thank you, Shane. Thank you. Can you give me the Marty impersonation? I cannot. Maybe maybe our guy Marty Cordero can oh, just no. do it himself. Marty can do Marty. What's up, Marty? <laughs> Well, I just didn't know how long this intro was going to go on. Hell, Presidente, you were like, hey, can you guys just get to me? I was having fun here listening to, I know you know it's Tatooine. I'm glad you, I'm glad you saved yourself there. Tatooine. That's not it. So do you realize, this is, this is kind of embarrassing, but um, I would consider you a, 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 a P1. Once upon a time, I had Shane explain to me 
the difference between the planets and the moons and what was actually going on. But do you know the movie that I actually figured it out, Marty? Which movie do you think? Here's is your Star Wars trivia. In your opinion, what movie do you best explain? Think best explained the whole that whole phenomenon of the constellation. I, go, go, Damon. I'd like to hear. It. I, don't know. I think it was Return of the Jedi. That was the only movie I knew, and I was gonna guess it, but I was like, ah, this is not right. Gonna end like well. when they're trying to shut down the whole. It's like. Wait a minute, what's the big deal? Yeah. And I and I didn't understand the difference between all the different references, but that one kind of landed the plane for me, Marty. It, it makes sense. Two nights ago, I, I, it was pretty cool. Forty years later, I took my 14-year-old to see Return of the Jedi over at uh, right next to the Hell Varsity Club at Alamo yeah. with Tyler and, and his group. And um, yeah, it was it was different. It was fun seeing it, but it was different and. Uh, no, look, tonight's a great night. Uh, yesterday was a great day. I was so busy working yesterday. I didn't even really celebrate. Uh, my, my celebration was wearing some Boba Fett socks yesterday. I, I, uh, <laughs> didn't, I didn't buy, I didn't buy anything new for my collection. I, it was just, it's, it's hustle and bustle of the season, but tonight is Star Wars night. I, I will get, I will get into the spirit tonight at Warner Park. Hey, pretty sick jerseys that they're wearing too. Yeah. Alex Sater, who's, uh, who does our graphic design and, and handles some other marketing communications for us has really done an amazing job in the couple of years he's been here. I don't know if you've seen the ghost lettering, the new community jersey, mm-hmm. the black one yeah. that we have that we're wearing throughout the year. So Alex is responsible for all of those. And uh, this year is a you know rebel themed and he's a Star Wars guy as well, I, I, as I've learned through the process. And, you know, we're, we're excited to wear those tonight and, uh, as as the night goes on, they'll be auctioned off to benefit uh, the local Make a Wish chapter, and you know it's all about community. Uh, you know, they want to park. Hey, how how nice has it been with with the familiarity of Jersh and kind of the great chemistry that you guys have have shared throughout time? Yeah, you know, it's been ten years later, and uh, it's almost like riding a bike. And uh, I would tell you, it's probably much more different for him than it really is for us because we've had this constant, you know, growth and arc of MLB changing, uh, taking over minor league baseball, rule change implement implementation, all the COVID protocols and now those are done. But you know, for us, you know, we've kind of been through it. He hasn't been a manager since twenty thirteen. Mm. So there's a lot of change and this week nothing's more evident than the you know automatic automated ball strikes uh, system that's been implemented and um, but uh, it's good to have him back. It's been a tough start to the season for the Royals because, excuse me, for the Chasers because of the tough start of the season to the Royals. And there's been so much roster fluctuation. And um, yeah, we're hoping for a little bit of continuity and consistency because our, our club here is much better than the record indicates from a talent perspective. But you know, when you're throwing a, a different lineup out every day, and mm-hmm. your pitchers can only throw so many. Uh, either so many innings or so many pitches because they have to be ready to be on the shuttle down to Kansas City. Uh, it's been a tough start uh, to the season. So when you're taking a look at, like, the rule changes, it usually we, – we see it start at, at lower levels, AAA, AA, uh, sometimes even single A for rule implementation. What can you foresee sticking by, let's say, 2024 that is being ballied about right now? Would it be the? I think. Go ahead. I think everything will be here next year. Uh, really? You know, the bigger question. I do. I do. I, I, you know, as far as what we're doing, I, and I honestly, I've, I've paid enough attention at our level to know what's going on, but not really be totally in tune. So I, I don't know anything that's going on below the lower levels. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of ABS. Um, yeah, I would tell you the f- first couple of nights, uh, there were balls fairly significantly off the plate that were called strikes um they were balls Mm -hmm. and and some vice versa uh beginning tonight there'll be a challenge each team has three challenges so i'm anxious to see how that works i I can't really explain it because it hasn't happened Mm -hmm. Uh, so the back the back three games of each series each team gets three challenges so we'll see you know we'll see if that creates any excitement it's interesting to me because the one thing that's been constant since I've been in minor league baseball since 99 on a video board is we can't show anything that is close. Mm. We can't show anything on the base pass, anything that may 
and I'm using air quotes, incite the fans. I'm like, incite fans in a minor league game? Come on, you know, what, what business do they think we're running? However, now, now we're, now we're going to have challenges that are, that are dictated you know, by our new rules, which is a little counter to what we've always not been able to do. But okay, so that's different. Uh, the bases, I think, have created a little bit more excitement, more stolen bases, runs. Uh, and, you know, probably the biggest issue I have is still the shot clock. And, and, and DB, you know, and Shane knows, you know, I've talked about that, you know, for years mm-hmm. uh, in the media. And, and my issue isn't the fact that we, that we have it with the program, but we were set up at 19 seconds in between pitches with no one on base and with runners on 26 seconds. And we've had it at the AAA level since 2015. Mm-hmm. But instead of enforcing it, and I'm talking about five, six, or seven or less a year enforce, enforcements of it. They started enforcing it last year, but they reduced the time to 14 seconds, 19 seconds. And what it's done on April 19th, when we had 5,500 school kids out for all about kids day, we had a two hour and 11 minute game. They got off the bus, got to their seat, ate their lunch and got back on the bus. Mm. I mean, there, there's there, two hours and 11 minutes is that's not a paced game. That's a rushed game. Uh, that's that's way faster than anyone would anticipate. We had an hour and fifty six minute game last year. That's crazy. I just wish this. I, I wish we could have enforced what we had had for six years, and then secondarily, I wish that they would have asked us what our uh, observations and our experiences were last year when they did enforce it with the with the you know lesser times before they they went full bore at the big leagues. But alas, there were there really wasn't a conversation of you know how impactful was this you know in the minors and you know I, I think the communication can still get uh, it can still grow and be a little bit better. Right. So what I'm understanding you saying here, Marty, is that you're not mad. He about, loves his relationship. Yeah, with MLB. exactly. <laughs> you're not mad about the game being <laughs> faster, but you're worried about it being too fast, like, like forced, an extreme fast. It's paced, it's paced versus rushed. Right. Those are different things. Those are dramatically different things. And as a as a pitcher, and I, you guys know baseball enough or have played, there's a difference between oh, no, being absolutely. And, 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 yep. and being on the mound. And, and, and think about the playoffs. We haven't heard a lot about playoffs, but do you think there's going to be any more 9, 10, 11, 12 pitch, four, five, six minute epic at bats? No, there won't be. Uh, if we continue with these rules into the playoffs. And that's not something that people are talking about. And that a pitcher stepping off the mound, a batter stepping out, runner on second, tie game or down by one, bottom eight, top nine. I mean, there's nothing like playoff baseball. Yeah. You won't be able to really collect isn't. yourself. And, 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 and I'm, con- so those are some of my concerns. And I, and I would go back to comment you made. Absolutely. We have great relationships with, with the folks that are in New York. You know, those were, were relationships that weren't there in 2021. They have, are, they are growing. I just, I, I just get uncomfortable with how some of the rules have been, have been rolled out, but you know, our baseball ops staff and, and, and our game ops staff have done an amazing job of, you know, following protocols and, and we'll continue to do that. But I, you know, being someone that's been in the game uh, for a while since 96 and minor league baseball since 99, they're just concerned that we're moving a little too quickly with some of the implementations without asking what some of the experiences have been. That's all. Uh, Pedro Baez, having been a fan of his when he was a Dodger, now he's the Astros problem. I mean, <laughs> taking six days to pitch was driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> MC, let me ask you, though, because you wear 15 different hats. Union Omaha, obviously. Uh, they, they've got Greenville. You've got Madison coming up here. How are you pulling this off, knowing you're really trying to get Union Omaha to get their own home? I mean, you're you're all over the place casting visions. Are we really going to be up against the break, Shane? <laughs> I'm my bad. I'm sorry, Marty. Can we get, can we hold you, Marty? Can we, can we keep you through the break, Marty? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> are you sure? My I don't. Man. You can tell me no if you want to. No, go for it. Yeah, I'll yeah. Let, let hold. Let's. I, I want to talk soccer because I'm sitting next to a soccer guy too. So we're we let's let's mm-hmm. let's double dip here if we can. All right, Marty, All right. hang on for us. We'll be back in about what? Chain three, four minutes. Three, he four, said that'd yeah. be correct. All right, three, thanks, Chris. We have Marty Cordero on hold. We will come back with him. More coffee and cream next. 
Rogers and Benning will be back in four minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in three minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in two minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in one minute. Rogers and Betting will be back in 30 seconds. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Coffee and Cream on Hale Varsity Radio with Andrew Rogers and Damon Benning. We're, we are back top of the hour here on Coffee and Cream in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio powered by Currency. Live from the H&H Chevrolet stage at Hale Varsity Club. Damon Benning, Andrew Rogers. Wherever you're catching us right now, whether it's 590 ESPN here in Omaha, we're live on Twitter, we're live on YouTube. We appreciate having you on the show. We also really appreciate having Marty Cordero Stick around. He's the president of the Omaha Storm Chasers and Union Omaha at Omaha Prez on Twitter. Marty, welcome back. Yeah. Hey, guys. All right. So, MC, you're you're balancing 
multiple hats like you're in season there's the business aspect there's the community aspect there's just the basic time talent treasure time aspect like give me a quick snapshot of what it looks like you know we've got a great staff you know if we didn't have i mean you, you have uh, to right our head, our, our head groundskeeper uh, who was new he came over from the salt dogs in february um because our, our previous one decided to get out of the business and then operation the same way you know nothing happens without turf in the facility those guys don't get enough credit with the number of events that we have it was close to 400 total last year um, between baseball soccer and, and special events and that's primarily march 1 and november 1 so you know you can do the math as to how many days there are and how many events are going on each day so it's a team and then you know beyond that i would tell you our vice president Lori schlender she doubles also as CFO for both Union and and for Chasers. You know, she's she is uh, she's my we work hand in hand. We worked together full time since March of 08. And she's she's the rock, really, from an operations and a financial perspective and and keeps things moving forward. I, and I have to give her a lot of credit because she's the one that deals with all of the MLB changes and, and, and implements everything, communicates with MLB. There's a number of evaluation and, and, and weekly and monthly forms now that we have to fill out and, and, and surveys that we used to not have to do. So she really does that. And on the soccer side, Peter Marlette, you know, doing a nice job with soccer operations and, and managing that side. So yeah, that, that's really the answer. You know, I, I'm, I'm sitting back from the standpoint of spending focused on soccer facility, potential soccer facility for, you know, for women's and men's and, team and youth academy and everything else we want to do but you know they do it and then the and then we've got a pretty much a whole a whole new staff you know after covid i mean there are very few people that remain and um so that that that's the answer uh, you know it, it, it it's not me you know the mouse trap has has been built some mm. days it works better than others <laughs> and uh, uh and then you know but beyond that you know i'm i'm our community guy and i'm our revenue guy uh, you know beyond the major projects so it's it's a team it's a de it's a definite team effort and you know nights like tonight when the gates open at you know it's it, it, it's uh 5 30 for 6 35 first pitch to celebrate star wars night that's that's when we can i wouldn't say sit back and, and enjoy but it's it's where we can you know enjoy what we've worked for you know this off season. How do the uh, thanks, stop it, thanks stop Shane, it, Shane. <laughs> Marty? How do the athletes respond to playing on like the same field and and um, knowing that you know you have you have a great staff put together and you have a really good groundskeeping staff too? But how do they respond with playing on the same field? Like, do are there always um, just positive vibes? Is there ever like a, a negative? you know, oh, soccer, you know, tore up the field here or baseball tore up the field here or, or anything like that. Do you ever run into any issues? I've been always curious about the aspect of sharing a field. Well, um, there were there were a couple of things. First off, when we, when we start in 2020, soccer, baseball didn't have a season. Mm -hmm. But made it, it made it, I wouldn't say easy, but it was fairly easy to have that year and to, and to you know, just to go through that. So 21 was really the first. And there were, there were a few moments, you know, as we were, you know, working through the, you know, the shared, the shared space, if you will, there were moments where, you know, there were things that we needed to do a little better uh, on both, both sports. Uh, but I guess the way I'd answer it, ultimately, you know, it's a, it's a baseball stadium. So, I mean, the focus is to make sure the field is ready for the development of future baseball players i mean that's that's job one and then job two is making sure that you know it's game ready because we don't do a lot of training from a soccer perspective we have three or four different things in the metro we train in the soccer in the omaha side so it, 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 it's a balance it, it is a delicate balance uh mc appreciate you sticking around let me get you out of here on this i know you're not in the the talent evaluating business per se because I don't actually know how much baseball you can sit down and watch, but are you, do you get the Ellie De La Cruz hype as Louisville has been here for three days now? They've, they put up some runs. You got them for three more. Do you, he's the Reds top prospect or do you see it? You've seen a lot of talent in that, in that facility. Yeah, uh, he's good. 
Matt McClain went for a cycle last night. Yeah. Yeah. Encarnacion Strand, you know, had a big night last night. This 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 team, they 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 have some legitimate hitters. Um, you know, I, who knows if they pan out in the big leagues, but uh, th- there's real talent. You can see it. You know, I don't I don't get to watch every at bat, but you know, I get to see enough that you know it's it's um, it, it, it's impressive. It's impressive, and I and I think you know one of the things I was busy with someone last night that I was just posting at the ballpark is there's you know how many of these guys will ever play major league baseball? And I said, well, in our franchise history, that number is seventy five percent, and the AAA average is around seventy one percent, and they were shocked. And I think all of us forget sometimes the level of talent because we're just one step below the majors yeah. uh, that we're seeing. And I know I take it for granted. This is my, you know, this is my 17th year here in the business and, uh, in, excuse me, in AAA. And I know I take it for granted. And, uh, you know, I, I urge others, if you haven't been to the ballpark since pre-COVID or in a couple of years, you know, tonight's a great night. Tomorrow you can bring your cat to the ball game for taking me out. To the game. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and then we finish up against Louisville on Sunday for uh, a 205 matinee. So, no, yeah, look, the season's here. Uh, it's not 30 degrees like it was most of the month of April. And, you know, we, we urge people to come out and, uh, and, and enjoy Warner Park. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago we were watching Lopez and Pasquatch, right? And, oh, Pasquatch. And, <laughs> and, yes. And he's still raking. I think, what is he? Two, he's 290 right oh, now. Oh, he's insane. Marty, Marty, enjoy it, my man. I always appreciate catching up with you. At some point, it'll just be me and you when you're not, you know, having to block out days with the city. We can just be a regular person and a and the good friend that you are. Well, I appreciate that. We only been talking about lunch for eighteen months. Hey, <laughs> la, 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 last one, the last two weren't on me. You you got a busy schedule hey, having to keep it hey, open. Uh, hey, Marty, he's been hey, also hey. talking about setting up his office for the last three months. So. I, I just, I just, I need a, I just need a friend touch him. See, that's it. All right, I'm in. I'm All right, in. all right, buddy. You good gotta, talk. You got to talk about Star Wars too. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Appreciate appreciate the relationship with all of her that and and Hell Varsity Club and you know uh, it, 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 I would say if you haven't if you haven't gone to Hell Varsity Club and listen to your listeners try it I mean the food's great and uh, yes, you know it's it's another great it's another great addition to you know to the Warner Park Southport mm-hmm. area and uh, you know try it out we hey, appreciate let the me, real real quick Marty because I've never asked you this in darn near double digit years uh, what's your favorite Star Wars movie. Empire Strikes Back. It's a trap. Uh, without, without a doubt. And uh, <laughs> other, other just thought, oh, this could go on forever. Well, I'll just answer. I'll, I'll leave on that. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> my, my <laughs> All man. right, Marty. Appreciate you, MC. Hey, Thank see you, you later. That's Marty Cordero, uh, president of the <laughs> Omaha Storm Chasers and Union Omaha. Shane, you'll be glad to know this. I double dipped yesterday and and was an emergency fill in for a show on satellite. And two of the four. You were on a satellite. Satellite. How was it upstairs? Um, how was it in outer space? Well, like normal, I couldn't see, so it was all. Oh. it was all good. Is that neighbor. is that how you learned what direction the moon moves and the planets and how they look, dude? It was like I'm like, why are they trying to blow up this forest and Return of the Jedi? I mean, everybody's okay. Like, so it's what? Not, it's what, not just a forest, but two of the guys. It's the forest, moon, and Vendor. Okay, man, I get it. Hey, what did I ask you about the cantina one time? I said. I think this was it's during, on Tatooine. It's on Tatooine. Tatooine is a star or a moon again? What it's is just a planet. Tatoo- what? It's a, it's it's a, a planet. A, it's Luke's home planet. Yes. It's Jabba's home planet. It's Fett's home planet. I mean, you could say that. Because uh, he lives there a, now. They have a Tatooine drink at the ballpark. Tonight? It comes in a big, yeah. There's two. One's Tatooine and the other is. Uh, it was Obi-Wan's home planet because he lived there the just, last I, part of his I life. I just know it's blue. I can't remember the name. But the other one's dead. Yeah. Anyway, you know, so, you know what I think it's called? What? Collide. It's a song. Shut up. Um, two of the guys, and I, I do people sleep on this one because I think you badmouthed it. They liked Rogue One. No, Rogue Rogue. That's a great movie. I like that one. I, ba- I badmouthed Solo, but I've gone back and watched it several times since, and it's actually pretty good. And I would g- agree with Marty, and I think most people in the Star Wars world, the people that like Star Wars and especially the canon stuff, 
they would probably say that Empire Strikes Back what's, is what's the a, best. Time out. What's a Canon? So Canon is a camera. Oh my gosh. Canon? No, it's it's the thing that shoots balls. Am, am I gonna, oh, am I going to regret this? No, you're not. So Canon is and it's in the it works for any movie. It could work for the Alien movies. It could work for Predator. It could work for whatever. Canon is the regular movie. So one through nine is Canon, and then everything else like the cartoons and the comic books is non-canon okay. that's that's what they call it okay so just the the regular not so but, just are, the, but aren't solo aren't those like one-offs or yeah part of the they're not canon okay Do Rogue you, one's not canon so so is it star wars colon all of those are canon yeah episode okay. one through nine okay and then all the stuff outside of those, yeah, like, like the, bad, bad batch, Mandalorian. Yeah, man, that's not canon. Got it. Correct. Right. Okay. Learn and I and I could be wrong on a little bit of that, but that, I mean that's basically uh, what you could be was, wrong. That, that you, you, they could not be called canons at all. No, they're called canon. It's called canon. <laughs> Twitter will typically <laughs> let. True. Hey, you know who should be shot out of a cannon? Oh, Alabama's man. baseball coach. Dude, Just is that, light that thing up and poof. I'm floored. And and listen, I listen, you cynics out there, I get it. Because I read all the column, I've been reading on this since Sunday because I actually watch college baseball mm -hmm. at ESPN Plus. I watch a lot of college baseball. Right, we're not having conversations about Wofford with Aaron Fit if I don't watch. And we're not talking baseball. to Kendall Rogers about every team in the top twenty-five. But you take it one step further, right? So I'm pitting what I actually see versus what happened, and you're like, DB, listen, like people don't bet on college baseball people don't bet on college baseball. So, so okay I, i'm with you right so i'm i'm, I'm reading these articles and and er, like stuff keeps trickling out so when this first started on monday it was why would the ohio gaming commission shut down about, betting and why is bama all of a sudden off the deal but uh -huh. i did watch that game which bama almost won mm -hmm. they came from behind, like way down on sunday and I, I don't know, I was busy pouting doing something, but I, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm flipping around, and uh, I think I actually wanted to see Florida. I don't know. Anyway, like I didn't under, I didn't get it. I was like, "What do you mean two things got flagged?" Now I do understand that, right? I'm not that stupid, right? But then, as you start to read, because yesterday morning and Wednesday night, but all I heard, Bohannon wasn't the one that made the bet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. Mm, little wiggle room. But then last night, I'm reading, whomever placed it was in direct contact with... With Bohannon. So, obviously, you're, like, going back with phone records? Or how are you doing that? Because the text. Whole, yeah. Nobody's deleting those? Well, I don't even know if you... If you send a text, is it ever gone? Like, even if you delete it? Like, it's got to go somewhere. Well, not on the Every, movies that I watch, everything right? Everything is they, stored. They, like, they do this thing called Scrub, and the cell phone mm -hmm. tower pings, and they figure out where you're... So, I wonder if the guy... Could the towers have pinged? Maybe. Is it emails? Because, because that would be pretty finite if you're at the stadium. Right. Right? right. Like, that's... Oh, yeah. That's pretty... Especially if you're on their Wi Fi mm -hmm. network. I feel like nowadays, and I don't know for a fact, but you can look up anything and everything. And yeah. like, even if it's not deleted, you could go to the phone carrier, and I guarantee they have a system that stores every single text message, every single one. Unbelievable. Um, but here's the thing Here, here's what the industry rumor mill was putting out yesterday, too. And, and as I told DB, no one bets on regular season baseball all that much. When College World Series comes around, people bet on it. But during the regular season, it's minimal bets. It's not thousands of dollars people are placing. So that altogether flagged everybody to think, wow, somebody's literally going to Do you bet believe the rumors? 20K. The rumor that of 20 to 25 or whatever it was? I do. I, I, I don't know why else something would get flagged if it was a $50 bet. Like nobody would have flagged that. No one would have flagged a $100 bet. Mm. Because you're betting $100 on minus 275. What are you taking home? Not that much. So that's they they were they were right. almost three to one. So the, I believe the it was LSU. something like two seventy five. Okay. Um. So the original bet was trying to be two hundred and fifty k. Pardon? That was what the rumor mill has going. That it was supposed to be two hundred fifty k. Well, they didn't accept the bet. They only accepted up to twenty k. 
So they placed 20K on two. Uh, one was one odds. was a parlay. Mm-hmm. One was wrapped in something. The other right. was just straight, straight up. up. Right. So you are set to make on a 20K bet at 275 odds, 7,200 bucks. Do you know how much Bohannon made as the head coach at Alabama? Now, he didn't place a bet, and I don't know if he was taking shares of winnings. All those details still have yet to come out. I mean, out. he was six figures. Uh, 450K. Yeah. So you tossed away 450K to give your Although they hadn't been to the NCAA in since, what, 18, 17? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they've had like 20 to 30 players drafted or something. Maybe yeah, it was 40 I was players redra- drafted. I was memorizing all those numbers. I, I just... That's a rumor. That's just the industry rumor mill going. Rumor has it. We can't play that, can we? But let, let me tell you this. FanDuel didn't take a single bet on that game. Talk to Bill. Okay? He, he gets stuff done. FanDuel didn't take a single bet on that game. DraftKings and other sports books reported minimal betting on that game. No large wagers, though. Idiot. I mean, you, you're looking at them like stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, boy. Idiot. Brandon, Br- Brandon said with everything being shared in the cloud, it wouldn't be surprising if they had text records. Oh, and he also knows. See, I need to read the comments more. Shane, get me hooked up with the comments. It's called the Mo Mo Grito. Mo Grito. Oh, that's a nice little play on words. Of what? Whiskey sour? Uh, mojito. Oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, saw the fiance with the pub. Oh, yeah. They put her in a polo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's not much of a polo gal. It was it caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. Caught but she was holding guard. mint juleps. Again. I mean, knock yourself out if you're a julep guy or gal. I feel like if I'm drinking a mint julep, I have to be on the grounds at Churchill Downs. Why I have to would be you on take four or five minutes to make a dwink? A dwink? Moguido. Mo Grito. You used to be a big Grito, Grito fan, right, Shane? You know, you wouldn't spend four or five minutes just to make a drink? No. Hmm. I mean, there's kind of an art to it, you when know. I, there's it's there's kind I, of a, 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 a joy rut, to you it. Know how long my drinks take me? About <laughs> five ten seconds. seconds, and that's <laughs> well, time you, to get the ice. You're just <laughs> putting ice in a glass. <laughs> yeah, <and> that's <laughs> pouring that's, it right that, over. That's that's about it. Well, Which, I will say this: do that, do that, do your way, and then while you're drinking that one for five minutes, make a nice one. Five I, I will say this: five minutes. Man. I thought, who's he, who's he think I, I thought you've been nuts for the past six months. Eight months that I've known you, okay. like seeing you drink. Uh, we get drinks after the show yeah. sometimes, and you just drink literally nothing in a glass, but whether whatever it's, it's it clear is, clear alcohol, yeah, whatever right? it is, yeah. And so after the show uh, earlier this week, you were like, "Hey, let's go watch X X and Y game," and I'm like, "Okay." And so we got a drink, and and they made me a drink similar to what you like, because I just said, "I'll oh, make me whatever." And she came you back. You say that way too much, though. Like, you got to kind of know. Just I know get what, it. Like, you're pretty free flowing and you'll do oh, whatever. Oh, when I say drink whatever. I could never mm-hmm. be. And price is more about me because I am OCD. But I know I, I, I you know, you I know what you like. Yeah. And, and that's cool. But yeah. they may, and I know how I respond looked, to it too. Looked like yours. And I'm like, Nothing's going to be mixed into this. That was my first reaction to it. She's like, well, do you need Coke? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'll just drink it without. Uh, and you're like, this isn't for me. No, I was going to say the latter. The fact that it was cold made that taste so good. So it was, wh- what would you call that? Just It was chilled. Chilled. So, so it was chilled. Chilled, poured, neat. I think it was just chilled and you had, whiskey. And you're like, hey, this is like flavored a, this whiskey. is a dumb question, but why is it this color? Uh-huh. And I was like, that's just because it's cold. If it sits long enough, it will clear. And once it clears, that's when it starts to burn. Yeah. Well, like when it's chilled, I, chill. I was like, oh, man, this is – I can do this. Teach like I, own, I, right? I feel like a, an adult right now. I can do this. And typically I would say to you, like if you caught – it depends, right? But depending on my frame of mind – or what I'm going through in the moment, I'll say, yeah, I don't know. Like I won't have it long enough for it to change colors. Right. Like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when, well, cause I'm looking over at yours. I'm like, Hey, why is yours still murky? <laughs> Where'd yours go? 
It just, you know, it just depends. When I was bartending, the owner, and this might have been, this might have been partly because Ooh, he guy. wanted to control maybe the amount of alcohol that went in the drinks, but he was very particular about putting in the, putting in the exact amount mm -hmm. and to get it down to a science to where you did that. So like customers that would come in, they would know the exact drink that they were getting and exactly what it would taste like mm -hmm. and they could tell you like if you did a good job making it or not because they would know the exact taste so that's that's part of the like spending like five minutes behind making something and the, you know you did a good job and you know exactly what it is that you got instead of just dumping it all in mm -hmm. i uh like full disclosure like i um and i love him but when i when i um when i lost my my brother uh, a couple years ago it was, um super unexpected M one of the things that i would tell myself right like you're having a moment this is kind of dumb but um like he's the one that introduced he had very high end taste watches clothes glasses fashion very high end taste and when I first came back from college and we started getting along really well, um, you know, we would go like have a drink. He'd say, hey, let's go to M's or somewhere like that. And so M's had what's called vodka fusion. It's basically just fruit, which I love, right? The, the bulk of my grocery bill, if it's not meat or cheese, it is fruit, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, why are those strawberries almost white? And my brother was kind of educating me. He's like, oh, you know, it's an infusion, whatever. And so I, I jokingly blame him that my palate is what it is. Because after that, like I can't, you can't go, I just can't really go back to. Red strawberries? Mixed drinks. Because I, I, I that's not. This is not what I was used to. He taught me the difference in 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 vodka because you know I'm very particular, like you know Chopin or oh yeah, or you, know, you know your brand. I like very, I'm very, and it's all because that was kind of our we in, in food, right? He kind of he taught me a lot about food. Well, if he's how, if how he dressed to high end, food. I bet everything he did in life was high end, like yeah. his drinks, his food. Yeah, he's he was. Yeah, did he have a good car? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He liked he had, the finer things in yeah, life, which had, is cool. Yeah, he had a he had the one up for me. I had to get the smaller, cheap little Passat. He had the sedan. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, I, I I had <laughs> I had this normal car with a roof. He had a convertible. So, so I've come by it honestly. <laughs> so when I watch like people make these drinks in mixology, it's kind of you know I'm like, God, that's a lot of work. Well, it's also a cool skill. Oh well, everybody will take part, mm -hmm. you know, and uh tomorrow everybody kind of has a weird skill i yeah. feel like no matter who you are you have a skill that most other people can't do mine is being able to turn brown grass green <laughs> i have a particular that's sweet particular, can you do that I got in a, my backyard i got a particular set of skills <laughs> i got a particular set of skills oh lord <laughs> uh we'll be back after the break rogers and betting we'll be back in five minutes and Benning will be back in four minutes.
Rogers and Benning. We'll be back in three minutes. and Benning. We'll be back in two minutes. in one minute. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Coffee and Cream with Rogers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Hey, welcome back. Coffee and Cream in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio, powered by Currency. Damon Benning, Andrew Rogers here. We're live from the h and Chevrolet stage at Hale Varsity Club. Wherever you find us, that's where we are. Whether we're in your car, you're listening to 590 ESPN, or if you're at home, maybe at work, you're tuning in to the stream. We're live on Twitter. We're live on YouTube. We're happy to have you here with us. We have a great set of guests coming your way in just a few moments. This too said, I love the Derby. <laughs> I had a 45. You'd like my mom. You go hang Big out. Big A. We're talking Kentucky Derby in the next segment. Then we have Mike Sauter. Uh, we'll do trivia at 930. We'll see what DB uh, has in the back of his brain. See if he can plug. I don't know, man. I, plug I, I in got, the wires. Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, I got, I got to dial in. <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> talk to Verse, which everything just gets unplugged I, <laughs> right after trivia. I, I feel so bad having you walk into my early morning meltdown phone calls. I apologize. No, I, I get entertained. <laughs> You're like, God, it's only 640. Why is <laughs> Like, what is going on? Life, man. Life drew down. Sorry, I, I'm we, so we, sorry. we do this thing in our friend group where we like point if somebody's like really angry and we're like, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I got it together. Shane strolls in. You had me nervous. He strolls in at 658. But I saw his backpack and all the stuff set up. So uh -huh. I knew he had. And he had here. sent the links already. So he was ready to go. Yeah. And I can't. I saw you. I, I was sitting at the stoplight and you drove by. I'm like, there's Damon. Me? 
Oh, and man. I was on my third song. And then you saw me drive I was I was on my <laughs> third dude. song sitting at that stoplight. That dude just comes in dropping expletives. Mm -hmm. Why did you run there this morning after you got here? Why didn't you stop before? I didn't know that I needed to stop over at Casey's before. What was that, Casey's again? I, I needed a vape. His juice. And I forgot mine at home. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. I'd say about the morning Robbie came and couldn't get his pin cartridge ready. Shane? Yes. No, no, Robbie. I feel like Shane had an instant incident like that too, no. but no, you didn't tell me the story. Yeah, so he's trying to give himself the, his shot, and it's not good, and Robbie's not good, and I'm like, uh, we gonna be all right. You're like, how do I handle this? He's like, yeah, I just called Natasha. She's gonna run me over my medicine. I was like, wow, like that was like real life diabetic, kind of, right? Kind, yeah, okay. kind of, kind of scary. I mean, he was trying for like ten minutes. Oh, uh, and I was like, Shane, 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 what are we, what, what are we gonna do? But and he gutted it. He, I mean, trooper, good on him. I appreciate him sitting in the chair Co for Koopa, that time. Koopa paratrooper with uh, Super Mario Brothers. Koopa paratrooper. Oh, Koopa trooper. Koopa trooper. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I watched that with Micah the other night, and I fell asleep on the couch. Super and Mario, he, and he was so mad. But I dozed at like nine. And I tried to pretend and wake up and ask questions, but I think he like stares at me. He's like, how about you just being knocked, dad? I was like, wow, really? Hey, call me out. Okay, kid. <laughs> so he, he gets hey, mad at bed, you. Yeah, no, hey, go to bed. It was just me, Zoe, and, and Micah. And, and I was like, hey, let's all just watch a movie together. And it looked like it would have been good. I'll but probably still watch it. Eventually. I think it's, I think it's legit. Like I like the animation. I don't know. I just well, you're you're not a huge Chris Pratt fan, right? Chris Pratt is that Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes, and he's the he's voice okay. of Mario. Yeah, but if I can't see you, like, like difference does it make? Oh, okay. But I, I mean, I, I kind of get feel that. Like, I can so, understand. So, that. like, I didn't even know it was him. You know what I mean? Interesting. But, but you know what's funny about that? I I'm can take or leave Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, uh, it's kind of like a space balls, right? It's meant to be funny. I can't believe you keep going back to that. Space That's balls? not a good move. May the shorts be with you. <laughs> See, you just like making fun of Star Wars. <laughs> uh, let's talk to one of the greatest voices of of, any of call, entertainment of any caller that calls in. Uh, Ramon, man, good morning. What's up, buddy? What's up, dude? Good morning, fellas. How you guys doing? All this talk about shows and movies all week has got you chiming in. Oh yeah, you know I told Shane I, I'm I'm excited to get back on the saddle, man. It's been, Listen, it's been a while. I'm, I'm excited not, to hear your my, my, my man Asian Wyatt loves TV too, so he's not just gonna be my food guy. He's gonna be my television guy too. I okay. let him. I, I I did lead him down the Primrose. I did lead him down a, a bad path with Fortitude, which was an, an old knockoff show. But before you get going, Ramon, first of all, good to talk to you. Hopefully, District 66 is treating you well. Your new house, all super bougie. Maybe you can. Uh, <laughs> you know, school school Andrew on how to do the sprinkler system. Uh, but uh, hey, have you have you seen or heard of Unforgettable? I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, I I think I kind of confuse it with other movies that sound similar. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not <laughs> saying it's some great <laughs> cinematic performance. It's not unstoppable. I'm just saying it has, or some other unmovie. I don't know. What's been up, man? We seen anything good lately? I did. Because uh, I saw the previews for Big George Foreman, and I thought, hmm, that uh, it looks promising. So I wanted to check it out, and, uh, and I was like, that'd be a good thing to start out with. I went up to the uh, uh, Maple Theater, and I was the only person in there. Really? Uh, yeah, ha but it was a it was a matinee. So ha have movie yeah. theaters come back, you guys? Mm -hmm. Have they? Okay, mm -hmm. they're back. Okay. I'm but I think in the in the evening, I think in the during the day, you can still. Oh you yeah, know, can you be... can sneak a movie by yourself during the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's up? What do we got with? I, I've heard several good things. In particular, whoever the actress is that played George Foreman's first wife. Oh, interesting! You said that because uh, uh -oh. for the benefit of of our listeners, <laughs> her name is Shane Mom Premier. Uh, I'm here to help. <laughs> hey have you seen uh or at least looked into the movie air i've seen the previews one you know one thing that uh um 
they said about it because Matt Damon uh, is a uh, one of the main actors in it. But they said they did not depict Michael Jordan in the movie, and their whole their whole rationale was that he's too famous and too big time, and that if they depicted him, it would just mess it up. And I I just disagree with that. I feel like it's kind of a tease. Like I want to see someone portray him. Mm. So, but oh. so how do I spell Shane's? Is is it Shane? <laughs> I know. I started looking it up. <laughs> I was trying no, to find it's it. H S H E I N. But she also goes by Shayna. But she, then it went to Shane. Okay. Uh, so yes, yeah. Oh, Mom Premier. Yes, okay. So yeah, she's yes. apparently a phenom. Is that is that true? Uh, I, I I got that impression. I, I appreciated her artistry. Oh come on, Shane! Stop it. <laughs> 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 All right, so so what so what do we think? So so the movie it it spans George Foreman's life from childhood through becoming the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history at age forty five. Yeah, uh, I felt like it was an honest portrayal because mm -hmm. you know when someone may, has a movie about themselves, it's it's easy to make themselves inflated, you know, and bigger than what they were. And it seemed like an on they showed his faults and his flaws. And, uh, you know, it, and I thought that the quality of it w was really uplifted by having uh, Forrest Whitaker in the movie. Mm, who is a fantastic, underappreciated actor. Yeah, he played his, his trainer and they showed how they met and everything. And just he seemed like he elevated the rest of the cast. Uh, I think Forrest Whitaker is fantastic. I mean, to be honest. Yeah, he's a proven commodity for sure. Man, uh, I was. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go, go finish your thought. So I, I was especially impressed about the way they depicted Muhammad Ali mm. because they did it with the utmost respect. And given the what happened with the Rumble in the Jungle in '74, how he based he he ended Foreman's career for quite a while. It, if you got the wrong person's hand on it, they could have had some sour grapes and yeah, for to, sure. For sure. Yeah, but but it they they showed Muhammad Ali the utmost respect in how he was portrayed the entire movie. And I, I was impressed by that. Ramon, uh, before we let you go, what new Netflix shows should be on our radar? Well, see, I'm kind of an older school guy, so we talked about. He does have an old soul. Yeah, we 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 have talked about a series called The OA before, and if you haven't seen that, that is magic. But it was canceled but it's still magic so are, are uh, you one of those guys man that's kind of down on only getting like six shows and then it doesn't like finish because it seems like that's happening a ton i'm not down on it i, I just i appreciate the ones that are able to finish but there's a lot of, of moving parts you know you have to get the the production right the money all of that and and a lot of things get shut down prematurely so Part of being a great show for me is actually being able to finish the entire arc of it. Mm. How many? Uh, how many? Mo how many moans are we giving the George Foreman uh, movie? Well, you know what? I think it it competed very well with the Creed movies, and I actually like the story better. I give Big George Foreman mm, 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 five, five moans. Moan. Okay. Whoa! Okay. Five. okay, that's rare. <laughs> I believe there's only one other show. Ramon, you break us <laughs> off a call anytime, especially with writers not writing. I'm going to need something yeah, to watch. We appreciate you. Thanks, buddy. Rogers and Benning will be back in four minutes.
Rodgers and Benning. We'll be back in three minutes. and Benning. We'll be back in two minutes. and Benning. We'll be back in one minute. and betting will be back in 30 seconds. Coffee and cream with Rodgers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Authentic and John Velasquez have the lead as they come down to the 16th ball. Cheers the law, still trying to get him. Authentic, cheers the law. Here's the buyer. Authentic has won the Kentucky Derby. Rich right is coming up on the inside. Oh my goodness, the longest shot has won the Kentucky Derby. Rich Strike has done it. Yeah, baby. It's Kentucky Derby time. You get extra giddy. Yep. The fastest two minute two minutes in sports is coming your way on Saturday. It's oh man, it's the Kentucky Derby. It happens once a year, DB. How excited are you? Oh, I am because we get my guy. This is your first introduction, so I'm pretty pumped. I'm pumped too. He's Anthony a legend. Stabili, content it? producer for NYRA Bets. Hey, Big A, what's up, Monty? Good morning. Uh, Andrew, I, I envy you. you, get to talk to you <laughs> Why do you envy me? Hit me hit me with it. You get to talk to me for the first time. Heck yes. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> Welcome. Well, well, no, so here's the deal. If you're in the vehicle, where are you on your way to? You still got a little time for the Oaks. I mean, where, where are you rushing to? Beautiful Belmont Park. Time to get to work, brother. We got uh, we got nine lives today. Um, nine lives today. Eleven lives tomorrow. I'll be at Mohegan Sun. This is the, the right of spring. Is talking to Damon. I'm going to let you know something, my man, because you know I love you. Yeah. One of your, one of your rivals tried to pilfer me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, and you tell him, did you tell him you're pot committed? Did you tell him, hey, you're in the deal? I gave him the Matumbo. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. I love it. I love it, man. You're one of our favorites. Man. And our listeners love you. So it's like, if if I ever need to feel good about the show, it's like, we just need to bring you on. I, I'm guaranteed to get one or two good li- one-liners all out of nowhere. You're going to be entertaining. Yeah. Uh, but but I for our folks that aren't following you on Twitter, shame on you because he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Was that blazer stunt that you gave your partner real? Was that the yeah. real size? So that's so Richie Migliori has won 4,450 races as a jockey, he retired about a dozen years ago. Yeah. He's a very good friend of mine. I know him since I'm about three years old, and I just turned 46 in March. So I know Richie over four decades. I forgot my jacket. I forgot my blazer down in the, down in the Naira TV office. And mm-hmm. I was like, hey, do me a favor, bring it up. And when he walked up to the set, he had his jacket on a hanger. And I'm, so I'm looking at his jacket. I was like, <laughs> I know I put a I know I put like eight pounds back on, but <laughs> that is fitting. He's swimming. Was, what were he you? Looks like Josh, he looks like Josh Baskin and Big. <laughs> yes, <laughs> great, great job. <laughs> oh shoot! So. Look, we we got a we got some really good. We got some five to ones. We got some six to ones. We got some nine to ones. When you're capping this deal, where does this rank in the derbies? And let's say the last five or six years for you in terms of getting some good value. So I'm gonna, you know me. I don't really pull any punches. I am not thrilled with this crop of three year olds mm. on the whole. Okay. I do believe. And we're gonna give you know we're gonna we're gonna give you the milk without the cow right now. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Forte is gonna get beat. Okay, he's the he's the favorite. He won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. He was the two-year-old champion. Only two other horses have completed the Breeders' Cup Derby Sweet Street Sense in 06, 07, Nyquist in fifteen sixteen. It's very it's difficult. They've been running the Breeders' Cup Juvenile since nineteen eighty four. This year will be the fortieth year of the Breeders' Cup, and only two horses in 39 years have won the Juvenile and the Derby. They're six months apart. Um, you know, it's it's tough. Coincidentally, both of those horses did it, having raced both of them in Kentucky. Uh, Churchill Downs for Street Sense, he won both at Churchill. Obviously, the Derby's at Churchill. Nyquist won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at Keeneland and then won the Derby. And coincidentally, Forte won the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland last year. So, he would follow not only three, make it three in in forty years, thirty nine years essentially, but they'd all be in Kentucky as well. It's tough to it's tough to hold your form. It's tough to stay healthy for that six months. It shows the durability of, of those other two horses. Nyquist actually never won again. Um, Street Sense did, but I think this horse is just better than these horses. As for the underneath, I have some opinions that I think can make us some money because I'm fading the third and fourth choices. Mm. I think Todd Fletcher, I think Todd Fletcher's going to win the Kentucky Derby tomorrow. I like Forte and Tappa Trice best. They're the only two horses that are win candidates for me. Yeah, and the five uh, slot, that that's again that's another 5 to 1 though, right? Yeah, he's the but he's the second choice at 5 to 1. Okay. So mm-hmm. I'm giving you ice the winter right now. I like a couple of horses. I like one bomb in particular underneath this arm, the number 11. My picks are 15 5 11 Six. You can get everything. We have, I mean, soup to nuts over at Naira Best. I've been writing since Tuesday morning. Um, <laughs> literally, literally got up this morning at about 5.45, uh, put the finishing touches on the last blog, sent the last set of picks over. Um, I had my dinner in Derby, my annual event on Wednesday night. We raised over $15,000 for the on Belmont Child Care Association. Um, so other than getting ready for dinner and derby, I've just been working. There's picks up for Belmont and Churchill for the next two days. There's blogs up for everything. So just head over to NairaBets.com. It's free. The content is all free. That's you don't have to pay anything. But if you want to sign up for an account, use the promo code Derby25, and you get a free $25 bet on the derby tomorrow. Derby25. So, Say less. Yeah, over at NairaBets.com. I don't know how you can beat that. And then we deposit match bonus up to $200. So if you put 400 bucks in tomorrow, after you bet the 400 in two weeks, we give you 200 of it back. Well, you ain't going to need it back because we're going to make a ton of money in the Derby tomorrow. Yes, we so you like, you like 15, 11, 
five. 15, 15, five, 11, six. That's Forte, Tapatrice, Disarm, who's the big price. Disarm's very interesting. And the other Todd Fletcher is Kings Barnes, the number six. Disarm, now we know your fans especially like to take their flyers. You got some, you got some long shots that look to bet long shots in your crowd. I yeah, know that. Yeah, yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. You, God, you got a good memory. I don't know Andrew yet, but it, 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 it seems like you got some some shadies over there listening to this. Listen, program. my man, my man likes first inning unders and like goal scores in hockey. So you you're oh, so spot uh, you're so spot on. It's not even he's funny. Part the, he's part of the family. He's, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a degenerate. <laughs> we don't even got to prick his finger for blood. He's automatically, <laughs> yeah. um, I, this arm this arm is the is the horse where if you're looking to bet five bucks on a long shot, this arm's the one. He's going to be at least 25. So you see the board, the tote board's different this year. Mm-hmm. Historically, after a horse like Rich Strike wins the Derby, and he was 80 to one last year, the next year, no horse is usually over 40 to one because mm-hmm. that mentality is out there that, wow, well, this horse paid a hundred. Yep, might as well bet it. Might as well take some flyers. That's good for us. If we have a real opinion, like I, I have a real opinion this year. Mm. Four nine to two, I think right now. He was three to one on the morning line. I think he's nine to two right now. Um, and there were some rumors swirling yesterday about a bruised foot. We had three defections yesterday. All three horses that were on the also eligible list, which means if a horse scratches out of the body of the race, so the Kentucky Derby's twenty horses. First twenty are in. 21, 22, 23 needed defections. They got three defections mm. in like 15 hours yesterday, which is unheard of. That's rare. For the Kentucky City. So they're all in. Um, the number 20 continuars out. The number 19, uh, Lord Miles is out. And the biggest scratch was the number 10 practical move. He had won the last two races, including the Santa Anita Derby out in California. He was the fourth choice at 10 to 1 on the morning line. So he was the biggest of the three defections yesterday. Um, is that, is that, that's Ramon Vasquez, right? It was Ramon. Yeah. Um, so Ramon's not without him out. Uh, Cyclone mischief. The number 21 needs a rider because Joel Rosario is riding disarm and disarm is the longest, the, the, the longest shot. I like, he's very interesting. Steve Asimus and his hall of fame trainer recently became the, within the last year, became the winningest trainer in the history of North America. He ran this horse a mile at Oakland. That was the longest he had ever run. That was his first start of the year. Mm. In his second start of the year, he went from a mile to a mile and three sixteenths. That is not a gradual jump in distance. That's a big move. Mm -hmm. And he ran second to Kings Barnes after a very slow pace. Kings Barnes set a very slow pace. He walked the dog on the front end. And this arm was the only horse running at the end of the race. But he didn't have enough points to get into the Derby. So Steve wheeled him back in three weeks. He finished third in a race at Keeneland called the Lexington. He got the points he needed, and now he's in. And for Steve to make the jump from the mile and mile and 316th, you know, when he was playing a little catch-up, to wheel him back to get the points, there is intent to get this horse into the starting gate tomorrow. And Joel Rosario, as you know, Damon, my favorite rider, mm-hmm. I think he is very dangerous. I don't know if he can win, but he's the kind of horse that can sneak up and get second at 25 to 1. And if the, if the whole thing gets cuckoo and collapses, maybe he can win it. Um, he's the long shot in this. So he's the horse that's going to spice things up for tomorrow. And Kings Barnes, Kings Barnes is interesting as a little bit of a price play as well. He's the third Todd Fletcher. And to talk to you sports players out there, in the past, up until about, I, I don't remember exactly when, I want to say like 25 years ago, there were only 12 betting interests in the Derby. 20 horses were allowed to run. But if you were the same trainer, if you were the same owner, they coupled the horses. So 25 years ago, Todd Fletcher's three horses would be the number so Brad Cox's four horses would be the number one. Todd Fletcher's three horses would be the number two. They'd have 11 more betting interests and they'd have, uh, I'm sorry, nine more betting interests and then four horses would have comprised the field. It was a a far different betting system. Before we get you out of here, Big A, the time, right? 
do you is it a fast track? Do you like two oh one thirty? Like what are you kind of thinking with time? The weather should be pretty advantageous. That's pretty uh that's a that's a pretty specific question, Damon. Are we looking to bet an over on the bottom? <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm just, I you know I like to I like to I like to know times if you like the if you think it's a fast you know, if it's a fast field. From you know, from too thorough to Ellis Borough, right? <laughs> Call him a run DMC and LL Cool J. You to play a fast one on me? No. Hey, what about what about what about the time of the length oh, of the trumpet? I just I just two oh one thirty seems like that that's 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 gonna get some equal action. It's a very uh, it's a very strange sign. I don't bring up that Timmy trumpets, please. Since that I'm a diehard Mets fan, I'm a diehard. I don't root. I bet horses, and I root. I love horse racing and baseball in that order. Those are the only two sports I really care about. I love it, man. We Fantastic appreciate your time, stuff. man. I could listen to you for the majority of the rest well, of the we'll, day. We'll get him for two more legs, too, yeah. here coming up, man. I'm looking forward to it, Big A, man. Best wishes, and we'll get folks to Naira.com. NairaBets.com. Thanks, guys. Have a good luck, Andrew. Great to meet you. Happy Derby, everybody. Hey, happy Derby to you, too. Great to meet you as well, Anthony Stabile. When we come back, Mike Sauter. <laughs> Rogers and Benning will be back in four minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in three minutes. and Benning will be back in two minutes. Cream with Rogers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Mike Sauter. I, I would agree, Damon. Mike Sauter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Sauter. Oh, man, you're going to put me on the spot. Mike, Mike Sauter. Hey, welcome back to the show. 888-638-4876 if you'd like to get involved at any point. Coffee and cream in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio powered by Currency. We're live from the H&H Chevrolet stage at Hale Varsity Club. Before we get to Mike Sauter, I'd like to take a moment and tell you about Dingman's. Dingman's Collision Center is your one-stop shop 
for all your car needs. They can fix tires. They can do oil changes. They can essentially rebuild any and any part of your car. Well, I don't know about that. If you total your car, I don't think they can do too much. <laughs> they'll just tell it, you it's total. Yeah, yeah, they'll just tell you uh, what, what it is, but they will treat you nice when they do it because they are some of the nicest people over there at Dingman's. I mean, I told a story earlier this week about how they even recommended me to competition, mm -hmm. and that just makes me want to go back to them even more now for all of my car issues. If you have any issue, go to Dingman's Collisions Center to get – your stuff figured out. Let's bring in Mike Sauter now, high school sports insider for Herd at Sports at Mike Sauter underscore on Twitter. Mike, good morning. Well, it's a okay morning. <laughs> What's up, Jerome? I, nah, I just good I, morning to I you. Just got you take it for however it is. You know what? You could, but take some solace in that, Drew Don, because you've been the only ray of sunshine. Amongst it is, a, it is cloudy uh, amongst a ton of doom and gloom. <laughs> I've been not very good. Sauter comes in. I don't Denny, know. You still as, say good morning. <laughs> as Denny Downer. Shane comes in. Well, cussing. when Shane says good morning, I it means something else. Well, I just I so and you've been the only one that's like been steady Eddie. Uh, I finally got my knee it. surgery scheduled thing that's kinda I, so gonna I'm, take I'm, me out of doing some stuff for a couple like I'm, a a half a week. I'm not a not, karma guy. Not great. I don't believe, you know, I, I don't like to say that because I don't like a pound of flesh, but I do somehow feel like you hammering Mulligan, Chuck over, Mulligan his, wrestling. Uh, yeah. over his knee injury when you guys were wrestling is very <laughs> Michael Jerome Sauter ish. And yeah. now you have a knee injury. Karma. Yeah. Mine's a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine's a little more. Uh, I. How about this? I was hoping it would be a meniscus. And yeah. it's not so How many schools that was I was like praying, like, please just have it, which kind of made sense because meniscus is when it actually hurts. Right. Yeah. But you have some degenerative stuff going on. huh? Yeah. It's uh, an assist in you, the back of my knee. Do you have some Brandon? Roy? Oh, man. Yeah. I have a, do you have some Kawhi Leonard? Yeah. Some I got a cyst on the back of my knee net, uh, that is a centimeter away from the main artery that goes supplies. So, my so you're leg. not getting good blood flow. Yeah. And do then you have drop leg yet. I don't know what that means. Left or right? Left. Where it's, you kind of have okay. to like drag it with you? A little bit. Not a ton. Hey, and then not, I have. to play around with my guy. And then um, at the same time, they're going to do nerve decompression surgery because the nerve that runs from your knee to your toes is like getting its nerve entrapment. It's like tangled up in stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the lower leg injury. Have your daughter's watch tangled? Oh, yeah. You have a new perspective? <laughs> so they'd love that movie they actually had great detail and animation for a terrible it's story. pretty yeah basically it's a, rapunzel on crack oh yeah yeah it's, I, it's i've seen yeah, it. it's overrated yeah. and what's the rehab like on uh no like crutches so i'm planning on i'm out of it on uh march 15th is the surgery and then I'm, wait what huh may or march may like Bro, in a I week was, i was about to say no, so sorry. you'll, be, you'll yeah. be uh you'll be on the men same time as caleb it's it's uh like about a five to six inch incision that wraps around the outside of my knee. And he's like, no crutches. Anybody else bend their knees? <laughs> yeah, Caleb is the 11th. That was he the said, only open weekend. Said no crutches and uh, and I can walk like right like after. So I'm going to state tracks probably out for me, which sucks. Oh, um, gosh. That is an event, though, to walk. <laughs> yeah. Like you have yeah, to go. there's there, no way. There, yeah, this is, there. Will, this, will this be your second one? Stay track, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and hills third, and third because I did it. I covered it yeah. when I was up in Sioux City. City. So I'm just gonna kind of lay out. I'm gonna do uh, baseball is a little easier probably because uh, it's a towel and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll do some baseball that week. But I just you know kind of I'm gonna miss the state soccer finals and I always enjoy that. Well, one's a given. Is that gonna drag me well, bananas? Right. By the way, oh, yeah. not, not doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm all. I mean, I'm just I'm like oof. already in a mood. Oh yeah, teasing yeah. and yeah. teasing yeah. bees to your wife. Yeah. I it's, saw you tweeting on pictures of you mowing your yard <laughs> and that was kind of weird, but That's I know him. you're I people know you're don't obsessed. people don't like that. I like it. Kevin Cooler, not a fan of yards I saw on Twitter the other day. Uh neither is severe. Yeah, he I know that. He that hates dude hates yards. When we worked together at that one place, <laughs> we um we we always talked about it and like mowing and so like, I got to I got to go home. I was like I got excited to go home and mow. And he was like, well, "No, we just." I don't even know opposite. if he owns a sprinkler. Yeah, he he said like, when it goes bad, it goes bad. And he's he, here. Yeah, yeah. He said he doesn't. Um, 
He doesn't have anything to water the grass. And I'm I, like, I, I, uh, I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> believe that. to the guy upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> like, Please. This little bit of sprinkle is like, yes. So, so um, anyway, no, I, like I got to run home to the sprinkler guy that's coming out um, you this and, morning. You, you so. and Ruru. Yep. Yeah. I had my yard aerated yesterday. Grass seed laid down in certain spots. I starter fertilizer. Uh, Brad. So, yeah. Yeah. Came out and did that, which is great. Well, Jeff did it, but it was Brad's company. Uh, so shout out to him for being able I to do that. I also don't aerate in the spring. I do it in the fall for uh -huh. a reason because you know, some people do. This is not sports. This is totally. Hey, that's listen, okay. Let, so let, let me, that's okay. Let, I, let me, let I me, do enjoy a straight line lawn. And if you haven't noticed the pictures that I shared you with your you guys. lawn like it was an outfield. Yeah, uh -huh. like a major league outfit. Very much so. Yeah, you mowed straight, and then you and I diagonally. and I and I very much so like I don't when I say edge, I don't like get the edger that digs it out. I do have one of those, but I make sure that there is not a blade of grass that is hovering over my sidewalk. Yeah, that's like scary. it is straight line. I Ridiculous. walk r walk real slow with the trimmer. Well, this and, is coming from a guy that puts his bottles in the fridge on the door by in size order. <laughs> and what you use them for, so I get it. Yeah, but that's a little weird because grass is kind of free flowing. Mm -hmm. You can actually <laughs> control bottles. Can control your grass Sweet too. Trust me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God, just growing. And what do we call this? A herbologist? <laughs> um, arborist. Was if it was arborist, arborist, arborist or trees. Yeah. Guys. And well, we, well, we went through every name in the book. I'm not sure it's that kind of herb, Shane. But I knew not. he was going to say that. <laughs> that dude. Hey, but listen. So I'm not how, opposed, but <laughs> how, how, how was how was Texas, man? Offers came out of flying it was good. left and right. It was a, it was a it was a nice trip. It was good. It was um uh, um uh, talking AU basketball here. It was it was really good. I, oh, I thought that, you went to go visit a guy. Oh, you actually no. went to a town. The the um I'd never been to College Station, so it's you know flat. Um, and Kyle Field just sits up like bang, there it is, mm -hmm. big old thing. Uh, not a lot around it, but. It, it was a good time. I thought basketball was good. Braden Frager clearly, obviously, played well. Um, that's a guy we talked about, you know, a couple of weeks ago and have been. And uh, good for him. He has a lot of tools, right? Um, so he's super athletic. Just a little more, you know, he's a little more, he's one of those guys that's maybe a little more mature um, than everybody else, which is fine. So we'll see how that comes in a couple of years, you know, a couple it, years. It from hasn't now, hurt a couple of guys in football that are significantly older. Right. Right, so we'll we'll see. And then, I don't think they care as much in basketball. Yeah, no. I frankly, I think they want them to be older um, and not have to deal with it. But that happened, and then Amir Martin gets an offer too um, from Cal State Northridge, and he just can shoot. I mean, he can really shoot. And a lot of people are talking him as a point guard. Yeah, well, he's learned. He's getting which is a little different, right? He's getting, he's, he's getting downhill a lot better. His body's kind of changing. He's kind of finishing maturing more. You know, his body's just that baby fat stuff's kind of going away a little bit. So it's good. Hey, the um, ETG 16's had a nice weekend. 17's finally got one. They're um, playing much better. Hey, listen, people look at and the people have said, well, they're not winning. Jeez, are they bad? I'm like, no, they're not bad. They're definitely the best team around here. And they're might go four and zero this weekend in Kansas City. Um, they're still good. It's just they don't have the six nine dude that's super long or six eight. Dude, the rebounding and and interior inside defense, like it is what it is. This senior class of basketball, there's just a lot of it outside of Trayson Anderson, who clearly has played got well too because he got a bunch of offers, Wyoming and um, North Dakota State, North Dakota State, and he got uh, Illinois Chicago yesterday. So that stuff, like you know, Tracing is would have been the ideal fit on that team. Oh yeah, I wish he was um, playing with us. But you can say the word politics um, happened. So um, that you know, but but Tracing's a good player, and that actually that NBDA team is pretty good too. I like Kate Cook, and they got some nice length. And um, yeah, it's, Kate's it's proud of didn't he? Yeah, he's um, and he's getting some you know interest stuff. That that team's pretty good. Dylan Clausen's on there uh, from prep, so. Um, a team is good, and they're playing on the recruit look kind of schedule, and that's good for them. That's a that's a solid move for them. Um, so Trayson's interesting. It's they're just, but in that senior class, there just isn't a lot. Or the twenty twenty four the class, there just isn't a lot of height. I mean, the, the, the best, yeah, the best players are all like guards or wings, right? So, and um, the three of them, you kind of well two because 
one just happened to have a good weekend, but you highlighted Jaden mm-hmm. Mosser and, and yeah, Mosser shot. Caleb. Yeah. Mosser shot. I mean, he was on fire. Like he, he is, he's a specialist and everyone knows that, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning he's a three point shooter and that's what he does. You, you don't, I don't think I've ever seen him like try and take anyone off the dribble, honestly. <laughs> I, I remember one game early last season, Miller North. I can't remember who they were playing. He was seven of seven from the foul line. And I'm like, why would you foul him on the dribble? Don't foul him at all, especially on the dribble. Like, he ain't. He's going to shoot it. He's right. not interested in getting to yeah. the 10. He can backdoor cut you, though, if people find him and finish and stuff. So he did a good job of that. But um, that team's good. I, they, they, they probably should have actually, you know, in – in the Adidas 3 SSB circuit right now, they have the one win, and they should probably be more like 500. Could be easily be 4 no. yeah. 4 and 4. Yeah, I mean, so there's a couple games that are just late. And all games are pretty much competitive. Unless, I mean, in that circuit, that's the way it's built. It's every, like, it goes down to it's a couple possessions. Mm-hmm. And that team can't afford, playing on the Adidas side of it, that team can't afford to have a, one bad possession. How was what's much his last bucket street? from Team Loaded? He ended up going for 40 the next game out. He takes some tough right. shots. Uh, number 15. Yeah. Hello, dude. That looks like nothing. I hey, mean, I, I, he looks I like. Told, I told Drew Don, he reminded me of like a mini Rex Chapman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but heavier. <laughs> and like doesn't look the part at all. At all. His little brother runs his mouth pretty good. Yeah, too. they both. He, well, Caleb was. I yeah, they fun. got into it. They had to stop the. Yeah, they stopped, they stopped the, game. the game. Caleb. Caleb. One thing about Caleb, he's not going to back down from anyone. And this dude was, <laughs> this dude was talking, Caleb. and then there was a parent of the other team like right next to me. Yeah. And I was, oh, you know me. I was so close to saying something. He's like, he yelled something, and I was like, I, w- I almost said, hey, man, that ain't the guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you, your kid or little Johnny or whatever his name is, like anybody else on this team, probably <laughs> fine. Not that guy. That one. That guy is the, ain't the ain't the one guy you want to go after. Yeah, I so. I asked him what happened, and he's you know he was like, well, "Go back and look, man." He, he kept he we'll was, go back and look. He kept punching yeah. me in the back. Yeah, and finally, I think he just had enough. Yeah, but you know that was fine. It, it's good. Like it's really good to to watch that high level stuff. Man, it's really good. That's the best. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. You you know you can make an argument. You know. I think a very fair one. EYBL at the top is better, right? Um, but I think in the in the middle, it, it's probably virtually the same. Micah so. asked Caleb if he could cheer for. He said, "Will you cheer for Ian Jackson?" Because he, <laughs> he gave him like thirty. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to Carolina, and Caleb they won Carolina. that game. Caleb likes Carolina, and Caleb goes, "Yeah, since basketball is not my sport, yeah, maybe, but." Unlike you, I'm not a fanboy, and I was like, oh, oh, here, we, here, we here we go, here we go. He, 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 he just couldn't answer hey, the question. He is way good, Ian Jackson. Yeah, he's tough. He, Ian Jackson. What happens is when you go to a blue blood? Ridiculous. Well, they saw old boy from Michigan State last week that gave him it's forty. Ridiculous. Badunga. Uh, no, that's Indiana Elite. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry, wrong guy. Yeah, but that dude is. They, I can't get him out of my mind. Like that kid is. He's supposed to go to Cincinnati. I'm like, oh, he's way. Better. You... I don't know. He's way better than that, dude. Every co- that's where I saw Painter, McCronin. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think that there, there's some talk that he's probably not um, gonna go there to Cincinnati. So yeah, the D- the reason for that is is it's there's connections. Um, Indiana Elite's um, f- program director, founder, his son is on the staff, and it, it's Cincinnati. Son also was in the mix for the Creighton job, assistant. Hey, you never know with NIL too. His son was on the in the like in the conversation before Derek. Kelly I know Creighton's recruited a couple guys from Indiana Elite. Yeah, of course, multiple offers. They should. Hey, so let's go. Let's go to football locally. Judon and I have been mm-hmm. talking about it kind of all week, and you were yeah. at the track talking about CJ. A lot of schools in town this week. I know there's a lot on Wednesday. Yeah, or wait. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah. Uh, return visit from Joe Gans was here, and he was like, "Tell me how Preston Okafor runs." I was like, "Okay," and then boom, Preston Okafor gets an offer. Yeah, we have yet to really get him any high school tape yet, but he is yeah. athletic. Mm-hmm. Are you? So let me ask you Go something. Ahead. Are you kind of surprised as you're like knee deep in this now how recruiting actually goes? Where you look at thirteen or fourteen games of tape. 
versus they schools, don't matter. <laughs> schools basically waiting on measurables. Mm-hmm. Are, does that are you have you reconciled that yet? I think I think measurables matter more in um, basketball than football. A little bit, yeah. I could see that. Because either you're productive Wingspan, or you're not. Length, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I just do. I mean, I get it. But I, I think football, I think the measurable thing is just is way. It's it's overhyped. Yeah. I I think in certain situations, you can just put film on. Like, you know, the whole like I'm walking into a weight room and I look at this kid. I'm like, oh, look at that kid. He can play football. Wow. Look at him. Because he's walking around. How do you know? Like you don't, you're just going by. Oh yeah, that kid. Look at him. Like he can be fo- either that or or football coaches or football people are just um, think very highly of their ability to coach kids up. Uh, with in state, what's going on with all the schools in town? You think Nebraska can keep up? Like, is there enough interest? Because no. there there seems to be a lot of intrigue. Remember nationally. that four number we were talking about. <laughs> Wait, what you were talking about? Yeah, can you move that down? <laughs> he's, so, he's, so Andrew, he's probably just like laughing because he's the only one that's safe because he dropped it all the way down to I think two, and two and a half. And a half. I think that feels off. pretty good right now, two and a half. Mm-hmm. Really? I don't know, man. Like a lot of dudes are just – I think it's – I don't know what it is, but, you know – you're laughing. You're like, yeah, that was two I'm, months ahead I'm, of the I'm game. just yeah. listening. <laughs> I, the, in, you know, what we're saying, for reference, in state, how many of this 2024 class it end was up your at power Nebraska? your player list yeah. that you put together. End up in, in Nebraska. And, and I I don't know, man. It feels like more and more people, they're just like, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Are like, you really? How would you say? Are you really resting on two and a half? No, of uh, the biggest. I still seven. think did it's five, start, four, three. Did you and start half. at five, or was that somebody? No, else who started at I five? said four, and we put the hook. I on thought it was three and a half, and he said three yeah. and a half. I said four and a half. Then I said, okay, I could see three and a half because it's mm-hmm. hard, yeah. right? So, just to reset it, go, <laughs> a little, yeah. you're like talking to McMorris, Chicken Scratch Notebook, Hall, Benning, Murphy. We we were always in, so that's one. Uh, Danny's off. Pyfrom. Pyfrom's one. Uh, and, and Carter Nelson. Nelson. So is that seven? A couple other guys that you have. Power that, so on. That, that, that originally was uh-huh. the seven. Yeah. Well, then you add English. And so can you can you cross so, off? So now Kyle's in. Cross off Danny. So Danny's out. So and Py and Murphy's in. Yeah. So that's one. Uh huh. So we still and have those, McMorris Hall, eight. Benning, Ingerson. Nelson Piper. We're missing somebody. There's a ninth. I know there is. There we are missing one. Just off the top of my head here. I got so. Ashton Murphy. Uh, who am I missing? Who am I missing? How about Iowa stopping out at Millard West? Yeah, Jackson uh, Williams can run, and I think we all kind of know that. Mm-hmm. I, I I will say this about McMorris. I I feel like it's a like Penn State, Oklahoma, USC. I will say this. I feel very confident just in talking with if them. If USC ends up offering. Yeah, it's it's a wrap. <laughs> like, and why wouldn't you? What about – what about uh, so who's garnering steam? What are you hearing? Who's garnering a lot of steam? Teddy Rezac. Correct. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh all the way to the bank. Am I not, Drew Down? You will. On any Teddy Rezac critics. Uh-huh. Ah, buddies with DJ. Uh, listen, I've done this a long time. Right. This is a real deal. Well, Anthony, and let's, and let's and look and where he started too, right? He started with a of, bunch of Division two offers. He can't even. Get, he can't even he get. He can't even get some schools to come in. Well, now it's D one. Notre Dame D1, comes D1, twice. D one. D one. D one. D one. They're coming. They're he can't, he can't get people to sixty miles down the road to call him. And the interesting thing about or DM that, him even. He's, I mean he's, nothing. He's, There's he's, literally nothing. I've said nobody this, can and, do that. and I'm probably too close to it. He's not a safety. He's an no, he's outside, outside linebacker. linebacker. He took one for the team when my ding dong kid got hurt. Right, he's we like have any- six four one ninety five and can run. Right, like he. I'm just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm there. seriously laugh. He got overshadowed last year, though. I mean, honestly, by his brother, so who plays the quarterback position because and he's, he's gonna just, put up big numbers too. How yeah. about Brands at at OC? JT Brands, yeah. yeah, he's a stud. He just height, you know, like does he? Sam Thomas. 
Sam Thomas is another one that's in that gaining steam. Can gain is gaining some steam. Yes. What about there are nine? What about Pat. Angerson? Uh, I think he stays a pit. I kind of do too. I think I think the loyalty in the first and stuff like that's super important to them. And I could see, yeah, I could see Narduzzi. Mm-hmm. Um, so who's so my nine? So we got McMorris. All you got Ingerson. Um, yeah, Ingerson, Benning, Pyfrom, Murphy, Kaline, McMorris, Hall, Nelson. That's eight, nine. Yeah, who's the ninth? Teddy, I think is. Oh, because he's got Boston come, College, yeah. and he's got a few more coming. Teddy, okay. yeah, that's nine. And you guys are really keeping us at two and a half. <laughs> well, now that it's nine, when it was at well, I'm seven, gonna go. I felt great. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at this one, two. Like I would add, maybe yeah, nine. three and a half is probably the number. I'd still I'm take st- the under. Let me get, still go I'll, with. I'll take three. You're if so it's fun. only three of nine. I'll take You're three. So Listen, fun. hey, but honestly, if it's only three of nine, like we need to have a conversation. No, we don't. We and don't. I think I'm that's not vouching still good. for Rule. I'm not vouching for Coach Rule because I like him, but they haven't won. It's true. It's not his fault. Uh, though, like, about that. like, what are we talking I about? No, I just heard you get thirty percent of those guys. I'm going to say the same thing that I said. I'm, I'm going to very much so say the same thing that I said when Frost was first hired. You can't come in and say we're going to lock down the borders and, and borders and borders and not. I just hit the table. Um, it's good. <laughs> you can't. You can't um, do that. Are you are you insinuating that he's doing that? Right you can't now? have a kid that is six three or six four, six three and a half. What are we talking and one ninety five. Oh, Teddy. And it's less than an hour from your campus. And not know he's a human being. Sure, that uh, can't happen. If I, you, if you are, I, I think whatever. That's, I think that's a little harsh. I think they okay, know. I exaggerate I, a little I bit. Think there. They're, I fair. think they're well aware. I think they're trying to extrapolate. Yeah. Well, extrapolate. Never mind. <laughs> no, it's 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 gonna be their bad. Believe me, it's gonna be their bad. I, and I'm not afraid to say that. Right? Yeah. Like, I can be objective. Like, they're. Definitely dropping the ball, but yeah. I'm also not going to be the guy that's like, and they're not talking anybody into anything. I'm they just also like it. played around with Ingerson too, and then like, oh, okay, we'll offer you now. Yeah, well, I, I, I think seeing them is part of it. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think that's part of how they do. Business. But the whole recruiting staff basically stayed the same. Yeah, I mean, I guess and he went to a bunch of games last. You know, like they know who he is. They knew he was. So. All right, so we got Thomas. I'm going to go three and a half. Thomas, Angerson, Rizak are the, the hot risers. Yeah. I think that's fair. Three. I think that's fair. JT that's Brands is in the, uh, you know. Well, if I have it, if you were up to me, I'd. He I'd can offer, play football. I'd offer Brands yesterday. You know what he is? Colton Feast. And he's better than a bunch of the he's same feast. age. He's Feast. Right? No, I'm. You got to tell me. Biden. Yeah. Stuff. Daughter, appreciate you, man. Yep. Later. We'll do trivia next. Rogers and Benning will be back in five minutes. and Benning will be back in four minutes.
Rogers and Benning. We'll be back in three minutes. and Benning. We'll be back in two minutes. in one minute. and betting will be back in 30 seconds. Coffee and Cream with Rogers and Benning on Hale Varsity Radio. Hey, welcome back to the show. 888-638-4876. If you want to play trivia against DB, this is how you win. Some credits, some gift card money to Hale Varsity Club. And if we don't get a caller. We'll use Shane, and I know Shane does not want to play, right, Shane? Somebody please call. <laughs> so give us a call again, 888-638-4876. Before we get to the game, let me take a moment and tell you about Dire Law because I don't know if DB is going to feel any personal injury, whether a listener defeats him, whether Shane defeats him, or vice versa. Maybe. Shane, if it ends up being you, you feel some personal injury and you can call Dire Law, the team, to provide you with a helping hand when you need it, no matter what you're dealing with. Dire Law, 402-393-7529 is their number or visit Dire Law to chat with trusted professionals about your personal injury claim. Shane, why do I have the feeling that I'm going to be calling that number after this segment? Because I, I, I honestly and wholeheartedly believe that it's going to be a victory for DB. But, but, should I put my faith in you? If I could put money down, what, what would the odds be on you? Uh, I would say it's probably pretty good. Good odds, like you know, like plus three hundred. Eh, plus four. Plus 400. All right, I'll put money on you. You get answer choices. You ready to go, Shane? Let's do it. All right, your first question. Who, rather, what was the name of the last horse to win the Triple Crown? Was it American Pharaoh, 
Smarty Jones, or Justify? The Triple Crown. The triple Crown. What are the horses again? American Pharaoh, Smarty Jones, or Justify? Damn. Uh, it wasn't Smarty. What are the other two? I'd say American Pharaoh. All right. Question number two. Shane, which NBA team was the only team to win a championship other than the Celtics from 1957 <laughs> to 1962? Was it the St. Louis Hawks, the Los Angeles Lakers, or the Philadelphia Warriors? I'm going to go with the Warriors. And question number three. Which former first ballot Hall of Famer in 2018 – Holds the record for most walk-off home runs of all time. Okay, I'm going to tell you that, tell you that again. 2018 Hall of Famer first ballot. Jim holds the record for most walk-off home runs of all time. Jim, Jim. Tomey, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Not Vlad Guerrero Jr. Vlad Guerrero or Chipper Jones. Uh, Chipper Jones. <laughs> Should we take a call here? Take the call. See if it's somebody that actually uh, wants to correct you on some answers. He's going with Chipper Jones. Because if we have an actual listener, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to say, hey, they get to play. Anticipating what Shane's about to say here. What do you got there, Shane? Uh, he's wondering to know if it's too late for trivia. Let's play with him. Who is it? It's Brian. Brian? How much time do we have? Oh, yeah. What's up, Brian? How you guys? How you doing? You got hey, time. You got time, man. We're going to do trivia with you because uh, let's just say uh, I think Shane was going to struggle there. <laughs> uh, so okay. here's here's the deal. You get answer choices. DB does not. You win. You get a $25 gift card to Hale Varsity Club. Sound good? Yep. Let's go. All right. Question number one. What was the name of the last horse to win the Triple Crown? Was it American Pharaoh, Smarty Jones, or Justify? American Pharaoh. Question number two. Which NBA team was the only team to win a championship other than the Celtics from 1957 to 1962? Was it the St. Louis Hawks, the Los Angeles Lakers, or the Philadelphia Warriors? Warriors. And question number three. Which former first ballot Hall of Famer in 2018 holds the record for most home runs, walk-off home runs of all time. Is it Jim Tomey, Vladimir Guerrero, or Chipper Jones? Score Vlad. Vlad, and your tiebreaker question. How many teams have made the Stanley Cup Finals since 2000? Give me the number. Out of the teams in the league, how many have made the Stanley Cup Finals since 2000? 2000. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Drop it off. Uh, let's go with uh, 20. 20 is the answer. Thank you, Brian. We are going to hunt down DB now. Shane's just working through uh, some technical things over there. Shane, if you go to the doors. Brian, how you feeling? Oh, Brian's on hold now because Shane Shane walked away from the desk. So I get it, Shane. Man, you move so fast. He is a jackrabbit when he moves. Here comes DB. DB, we're playing Brian, not Shane. We started with Shane, and then we went to Brian. You feeling good? Pot him up, Shaner. I do know. I know one of them is a Kentucky Derby question because it's the Derby weekend. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. Everything All right, else Shane, is a crap shoot. Kick up the music once again. Let's do this thing. Hey, DB. What's up? What was the name of the last horse to win the Triple Crown? Can I come back to it? You can. Yep. All right. I, 
because you may want to save your lifeline. Well, I know it's one of two. I can't remember which. It was either it's either American Pharaoh or Justify. I need I need time. Let me come back okay. to it. Okay, which NBA team was the only team to win a championship other than the Celtics from 1957 to 1962? What? The only team in that large stretch of championships. It's actually probably, I think it extends even further into all the way when the Celtics just won, what, like eight, nine in a row, whatever it was. One team stopped it. Who were they playing all those years? Was it the, was it St. Louis? But they were winning. Uh, I got to come back to that. <laughs> hey, I'm going with Justify for number one. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um... I right. may have to use my I may have to use my lifeline on that one. Which former first ballot Hall of Famer in 2018 holds the record for most walk-off home runs of all time? Uh uh Coach Manji's team. Uh he's an Indian or a Guardian. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh Jim Tomey. And the middle question, you want the answer choices? Yes. So the question was, the only team to win a championship other than the Celtics from 57 to 62, was it the St. Louis Hawks, the Los Angeles Lakers, or the Philadelphia Warriors? <sighs> Los Angeles won it in 67. What were my years again? 57 to 62. I'll take St. Louis. They played them all the time. And the tiebreaker. Uh, how many teams have made the Stanley Cup Finals since 2000? Um, 44. There's not 44 teams in the NHL. Oh, you mean different teams. I thought. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I, I get you now. Um, 22. Thank you, DB. All right. Let's go through the answers. How you feeling? Not good. <laughs> God, he sucked. Uh, Brian, you back? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Let's go through these. Yeah, he's got a little pep in his step. He probably feels good. What was the... Uh, I don't know. You, you got me uh, here now. <laughs> All right. What was the name of the last horse to win the Triple Crown? Was it American Pharaoh, Smarty Jones, or Justify? Brian, you said American Pharaoh. DB, you said justify. The answer is justify. Let's go. 2018. Ah. American Pharaoh was 2015. I know yeah. it was one of the two. Mm -hmm. That was a dice roll. Yep. Luck. All right, question number two. Which NBA team was the only team to win a championship other than the Celtics I don't from feel 57 to 62? Uh, Brian said the Warriors. You said the Hawks. It was the Hawks. Well, they played them all the time. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, which. <laughs> oh, my God. The last question, which former Hall of Famer in 2018 holds the record for most walk-off home runs of all time? Guerrero was Brian's answer. DB's answer was Jim Tomey. It is indeed Jim Tomey. Let's a go. sweep for DB. Plus, if oh it's icing God. on the cake, how many teams have made the Stanley Cup final since 2000? Brian said 20. DB said 22. It's 23. We're talking to Matt Versal next. Let's go! Rodgers and Benning will be back in four minutes. Rogers and Benning will be back in three minutes.
Rodgers and Benning. We'll be back in two minutes. and Benning. We'll be back in one minute. Rogers and Betting will be back in 30 seconds. Coffee and cream on Hale Varsity Radio with Andrew Rogers and Damon Benning. Now let's find out what Matt Verzal is better at. Telling stories or making pizza. Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Matt's an exceptional young man. Matt Verzal. Happy birthday, Matt. You know, Matt, he's a tremendous athlete. Matt Verzal. <laughs> Come on, Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Matt, I'm with you. You know, like Matt Verzal, you're one of the sexiest people in the world, but you're not one of the most beautiful. How does that happen? <laughs> Here is Matt Verzal. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. Hey, welcome back as we wind this thing down on a Friday. It's coffee and cream in the morning on Hale Varsity Radio, powered by Currency, Damon Benning, and Andrew Rogers. We're live from the H&H Chevrolet stage at Hale Varsity Club, and happy to welcome in our regular, our Friday closer. Matt Verzal here, joining the show, former Husker and Pisons pizzeria owner, My, er, Mike, I was just talking to Sauter. Matt, oh, good morning. He kills Sauter, doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> good, morning. good morning, gentlemen, how are we doing? I'm, I'm good, how, how about you, Matty? Just over here running Ding Bang's meat storage, just waiting for <laughs> <laughs> and Do you still have stuff in his in his coolers? Uh, it's as it's as small a batch as there's been in quite some time, right? Is that accurate, Matty? That's very fair, Damon. I yeah, I took some stuff the other day. You did. People were impressed uh, that you stayed as long as you did. You yeah. Usually, you know, I, I four or five people get in. You usually bail, but you were kind of in there holding court. I. Uh, it was I had to, there was something important I had to talk to you about, and I forgot what it was. Oh, it was, um, it was uh, Jackson Williams and, and your thoughts on being so close to the family. That, that, and I never got to it because I don't like to talk about high school kids in public. Yeah, here's my deal. Like, and football is a fantastic game. Very fortunate to have played it. But baseball money is very guaranteed. <laughs> very very good mm -hmm. to me and it seems, exactly and it seems as though you know if you have those options i would keep all of those options open but you know i would i would he's a, it's an athletic family you know you if you look at it being with this close to the kentucky derby you know sire and and stud are, are pretty athletic people so you got you got you got nothing but genetics there, and the kid can he can run, he can he can do it all. So it, it'll be like to see him get a little size on him. But his dad was never a huge human being. His mom is not a very large person either. So 
it yeah, will she, be interesting to see how that goes. She's teeny. At least Jamel is tall. Although I think Sarah is kind of tall for a female. Yeah, she is. I mean, I'm not saying you, I, I ain't talking vertically. I'm talking thickness and width. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. It's, it's the itty bitty, <laughs> the itty bitty families. I was talking to a yeah, baseball guy that was listening this morning when we were talking about him, and he's pretty impressed. He, you know, he he thinks that he's he's not only a could be like a a D one level pitcher if he wanted to be because he's like upper eighties, ninety. We know he can run. He's in center field. He said he thinks he could be a two sport guy too at like an Iowa or a Nebraska type school. Uh, to do that, you got to have a coach that was, is willing to. And yeah, I don't know if I, he is one of those coaches are. I thought I did, mm -hmm. and that didn't come to fruition. So I, I you're <laughs> one thousand, you're one thousand percent spot on. Yeah, but I mean, it's you know, athletes are athletes, and, and they're going to go and play games and be good at them. And then, it's you can do it. It's just there's a very few that actually pull it off. Yeah, I feel like at you the highest level, it. it's it's rare. It, maybe at like NAIA, you know, smaller D D two D three schools, you can do that. D one, pretty tough. I don't even think it's, you could do it at like Northwest Missouri State. I mean basketball, well, I mean, football, got, like they win championships. Uh huh. You got a little buddy down there at UCF played in the. He's their starting quarterback, and he. I think it was two for three in their game that they played before he had to leave in the seventh inning. Oh, yeah. Good call. Look at you, you yeah. Rolodex. Hey, so. I mean, the, the best one ever was, was D-Stad. Yeah, for sure. Freak, freak punter and freak baseball player. Yeah, and super dude, too. Hey, let me oh, ask yeah. you something. What what do you think Nebraska's getting when, considering that uh, uh, Caden is – Becker is now playing kind of a different position, uh, like at the tight end spot. I saw him at the – he's at my barbershop last week, just kind of stumbled in on a humbug. He is a big, big kid. What do you think Nebraska or you know, is getting in his athleticism since he left Wyoming now that he's committed to doing something other than quarterback? Yeah, he – physically, he's, you know <laughs> – if you look at this, and, and it's all how you want to invest, right? So there's Caden has had many trainers and many things provided. So physically, when you see him, he looks as if, you know, chiseled from stone. And can play, he can play the game of football. It's how well he's going to adapt to this new position understand the concepts, understand the responsibilities that they want him to take. It's going to take some study time for him. It's going to take some time for him to get the playbook and figure it out. But as far as physical gifts go, he should not have a problem with it. It's picking up the rest of it. And, you know, as the defense moves, can you, can you scan the field, realize your blocking assignment changed and go from there? You know, those things will, will, will have to factor in him. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's a physically gifted young man. Hey, Verse, I got a question just regarding the team itself uh, at Nebraska. How do you feel they compare to other Big Ten teams at this moment in terms of talent and depth? I think your frontline talent is, is very similar. You're going to be behind the elites of the conference. Mm. Uh, the middle, you know, you're, that's where you're at. You, and, and the quicker you, you accept that, you come to terms with that. You don't have to be happy with it, Okay. But with, <laughs> okay. with the depth, the depth is where it, it I think, is going to show. You know, your, your frontline guys are going to be fine. They, they really are. I think they have talent at the receiver position. They have talent at the quarterback position. They have talent at the running back position. Linebacker, you know, might be a little light, but the, the system they're playing is more safety focused. So you have some guys out on the field that if they can get responsibilities down, they're more than, than athletic enough to do the job. Okay, cover corner, you got young guys in there that they're not afraid to throw into the mix. The little boo guy, he's he's in it. Like he he's he thinks that is his job. And that's awesome. So, you know, you get him in there where you're where you're gonna have to find depth is on your offensive and defensive line. I was really bummed out that the win gentleman decided to move on. Um, you know, there's some that say he's lazy. I, I the days that I saw him. I thought he did a really nice job. Yeah, that one that one surprised me. I don't know enough about it, believe yeah. it or not, to comment. But I, 
listening to you, I agree with you. That I I was yeah. I felt like he could have been in the rotation. He had to have some good offers elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, in the which is crazy because you're out of school with the opportunity to be a starter mm-hmm. in a conference that produced that it is going to to, to showcase probably right behind the SEC of what you need to do to be to be an NFL type player. But anytime something like this happens, the great Nick Danzy's phrase of opportunity for advancement <laughs> comes into my brain and, and who's ever next in line has to take that that next role. You know, and you have to you have to be there and work hard and all those cliche things, but this is your opportunity. Like because because even now you may think you're gonna be at Nebraska forever. But this is the reality of the business that they're in now. They are going to flip that roster again. And if you think you feel safe with where you are, you are wrong because they're going to roll in another 30 next year. And if, if you don't make the cut, they're going to have your papers ready. So it, it's this isn't, hey, buddy, I'm worried about your feels. It's, hey, we're in a business and my family's livelihood depends on this. So if you don't like the way this is going and, and you realize that I brought in somebody to replace you, you better prove to me you're better than them, or, or we're gonna we're gonna part ways. I'm actually I'm I'm going out on a limb, and I'm gonna ask you this question because I know you're gonna make fun of my personality, and, <laughs> and have some ask yourself this question kind of answer. But how far how fine a line is it between being paranoid and competitive? They go hand in hand. Mm. They go hand in hand. You you can call it paranoid or competitive. My guy, our guy, sorry, our guy, Cluster, he will say he was paranoid every day. Yeah. Because he had, he had a complete psychopath behind him <laughs> that had no regard for his body. <laughs> no regard. But what made him paranoid is that he knew that staff, if need be, would play that psychopath. Mm. He, he didn't, he didn't, it wasn't a, oh, I'm Cluster freaking Johnson. I can walk straight around a fire hydrant. I'm not bow legged. I'm playing this whole thing. It was, he, he was, he had to fear. Wow. And he had to be paranoid. You know that's true. Yeah. yeah. Don't act like it is. Jamel can do it too. Hey, those two dudes could race over a set of like parking cones and run straight. They don't have to dodge <laughs> in. <laughs> Maddie, are, are you, are you pleased? They've kind of hit the skids, but the NL Central isn't like, Ain't got a bunch of movers and shakers. Mm-hmm. Are you pleased with the Cubs out of the gate? It's it's refreshing, right? Because the, the pitching is the question, okay? So pitching is off to a nice start. Maybe everybody doesn't quite have the book on them, you know, that they that they have on other pitchers. Now there's a book out on them so you can kind of see tendencies and da 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 But, you know, I'm not sure I haven't seen if Hendricks is back, but getting him back, you know, and healthy is going to be a thing. It, it just – if they could get to near 500 by the end of the year, I would, and bring up some of this young talent, right? Mervis is on, or Marvis, I would say, I say Mervis. <laughs> but if they're, if they're bringing him up, right? You get your young talent in it. I mean, the guy's just hitting bombs down in, in AAA. So let's bring him up. Let's see what he can do. They got another nice shortstop project whose name escapes him right now, but. You know, get these young guys in, and then there's no break-in period next year if your pitching is for real. Mm. And, and now you can now, – now you know it's like, oh, well, we didn't bring him up last year because we didn't have the pitching. Like, no, we brought him because we were going to have to try to win games 9-8. to eight. So we'll bring him up. He's going to try to hit bombs. We're going to see what happens. So if they can get the pitching to hold up, it'll be, it'll be okay. Appreciate the time, Verse. Thanks, Matty. Yeah, boys, be good. And before we let you go on the weekend, get your tickets now to Whiskey Fest 2023. They are limited, or there are limited VIP tickets available. Whiskey Fest is Saturday, July 15th at downtown Hilton, Omaha. Go to omahawhiskeyfest.com to get your tickets today. That'll do it for the week. We will see you on Monday.